Hi kids, am I audible to you all? Hi everyone. Hi. Hi kids, hi everyone, am I audible to you? Perfectly audible and visible? Perfectly audible and visible? Hi everyone, a very good morning to all of you. Welcome to Unacademy Neat English. I'm your biology educator Ambika Sharma and today we are going to revise the top 10 concepts of the plant physiology, right? Plant physiology, a very important topic and many students requested for the marathon because we know that we are running out of time. So we are going to majorly focus on few topics, right? The most important one that I have even mentioned in our top 60 important topics of biology video, okay? Okay, so that is what we need to discuss today. That is what we need to revise today. So are you people ready for this? Because this session is for, uh, this session is basically on your demand. Yes, this session is on your demand. So tell me everyone, are you guys excited for this session? So I just need one thing from all of you, the concentration obviously, your time obviously and your NCRT. That's all. You have to keep your NCRT with you. Just keep one pen paper and pencil and in CRT. Whatever topics I am going to mention, revise them again and again. Solve the questions. Solve the questions of that particular topic and, and, and you need to solve the PYQs based on that. That will be more than sufficient for all of you. That will be more than sufficient for all of you. Okay. I will I'll, I'll try to complete it in three hours. That is what I have planned. Okay. That is what I have planned. Okay. And I think three hours are you, you should invest your three hours for this particular topic because this plant physiology is important. Okay. Done. This is not fair. Huh? Now I am teaching plant physiology. So many of you are asking for the genetics. If I will teach genetics, then you people will ask for ecology. If I will teach ecology, then you people will ask for the human physiology. Isn't it? Isn't it? That is not right. Yeah? That is not right. And why such less number of students are there? Just share the video link with your friends and tell them that today we are going to revise the top 10 most important topics of the plant physiology. And here you can see the list. We'll talk about the basics of transport. We will discuss Simplast and Apoplast and even the bulk flow hypotheses. Right. I'll directly tell you the type of question that will come in your exam. Right. Then obviously growth rates and mainly, mainly here we have the PGRs, plant growth regulators. Right? Definitely two questions will come from plant growth regulators in one way or in another way. Secondly, bache, nitrogen fixation, very important. And from glycolysis, crab cycle and ETC, I'll directly tell you that what kind of questions can come in your exam. Right? Here I'm directly going to mention you that thing only. Right? And then PS1, PS2, C3, C4, Z scheme in a very easy way and cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation. So still, if you people are having any doubt related to this topic, I'll cater that. Right? If you guys want to, you know, ask any question related to these topics, I'm going to cater that. And moreover, moreover, uh, in between, and today we are only going to revise the things from the NCRT. Okay? We are only going to revise the things from the NCRT. Okay, bache? So guys, if you have checked my human physiology marathon, na, in that marathon, I have covered the entire syllabus. And it was not the formality, right? Actually, I have covered the entire syllabus in which all the important concepts were catered. And even, 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 I have shared the PDF in my Telegram group also. Today also, we are going to target the top 10 plant physiology topic because I was getting so many, so many messages on Telegram to complete this. So I want you people to concentrate here. So I'll finish it within three to four hours, right? Within three to four hours. And uh, thank you for all the love that you people have provided us. But uh, obviously, Dil Mange more, we want more. So uh, do subscribe our channel. Do recommend this channel to your friends, to your juniors, to your classmates, right? Because this is a this is going to be surely this session, this particular channel will be the one of the best channels for the need preparation. One of the best channels for the need preparation. Do you all agree? Do you all agree? Tell me, do you all agree? Huh? That yes, ma'am, this channel is one of the best channels for the need preparation. Isn't it? Isn't it? Thank you so much. Thank you. Huh, I'm going to start. But your yeah, number of likes are quite less. See, uh, right now, 500 plus students are watching the session and number of likes are too less. Come on, like the video right now. Like the video right now and if you are new to our channel, do subscribe our channel. 
do subscribe our channel and today ncrt it is the ncrt that we are going to follow today okay so let's start with the transport and plant and as i said we'll go with the basics okay okay so what are we going to start first we are going to start the chapter transport and plants and as i said we will go with the basics and with the most important topic right now you know that bachche in the case of plants right in the case of plants they do not have a proper circulatory system okay in their case they are having the vascular tissue what do plants have plants are having the vascular tissue and that vascular tissue includes xylem and the phloem right xylem and the phloem isn't it isn't it now when you talk about the xylem xylem is meant for the transport of water plus minerals and when you talk about the trans when you talk about the phloem you know that it is meant for the transport of food isn't it it is meant for the transport of food isn't it isn't it now water plus mineral and here we have the food so when you talk about the xylem xylem will carry the water from roots to the tip from roots to the tip from roots to the tip are you getting my point so here it is going to be the unidirectional unidirectional way to transport the things but when you talk about the phloem food organic things phloem food organic things so you know that in the case of plants the food will be synthesized in the leaves right bachche right bachche food will be synthesized in the leaves and then that food needs to get translocated to the different different parts so in the case of phloem the when it comes to the transport although it is bi uh, multi directional but we have to pick up the words from the ncrt only so we specifically mention it as bi directional this is what you know already right this is what you know already and when xylem and phloem when xylem and phloem they are uh ma'am genetics ma'am can you take a session on the tricks for the tricks i'll take the session definitely and right now mr neet aspirant we are focusing on the plant physiology and i think you people should focus there because this uh, session is uh, mainly because you people requested it that's why i'm taking it that's why i'm taking it so i want you guys to uh, to support me i want you people not to spam here just answer the particular question and whatever doubts you have i'm going to cater that okay i'm going to cater that so let's not waste time let's focus here what say guys what say let's not waste time let's focus here isn't it isn't it aligned yes so who's going to be the class monitor today who's going to be the class monitor today guys you will be able to score 60 plus marks if you are going to attend this session seriously 60 plus matlab it can even go 70 plus but i am telling you the minimum number 60 plus marks you guys can score from this particular session so who is going to be the class monitor don't allow the people to spam here isn't it don't allow the people to spam here okay so can we continue can we continue yes how's the energy guys how's the energy I want that fire emojis in the chat section. Done? No spamming. You are going to focus here only. You will listen each and every point because I am whatever I am telling, whatever I am mentioning here, na bache. All of them are PYQs. All of them are PYQs. Whosoever wants the genetic, please leave the session. Don't waste your time here. Don't waste your time here. Kindly leave the session. Okay? Done? Done? okay so now focus here so as i said in the case of phloem it is going to be the bidirectional so bachche in the case of plants because they do not have heart they do not have the circulatory system xylem and phloem is there and whenever xylem and phloem is included whenever xylem and phloem is present in the whenever xylem and phloem is used for the for the transport for the long distance transport we use the word translocation right whenever xylem and phloem they are involved whenever xylem and phloem they are involved the word is going to be translocation is that clear it's a p y q it's a previous year question the first thing now another thing is now in the case of plants again you know that short distance transport is also there 
short distance transport is also there like let us say here we are having one cell here we are having another cell here we are having one cell here we are having another cell. So, short distance transport is also there when it comes to the long distance transport xylem and phloem is included. So, it is the translocation but whenever there is a short distance transport obviously the very small things the diffusion the facilitated diffusion and the diffusion the facilitated diffusion and the active active transport is going to help is not it right diffusion facilitated diffusion and active transport is going to help. So, what do you need to remember here see for this particular concept the only thing that you need to remember from NCRT is that particular table do you know about that table remember that table. So, in the if I talk about the basics of diffusion so you know that diffusion is the movement right what is diffusion sanaya diffusion is the movement movement from the high concentration movement of molecules from their high concentration to the low concentration from their high concentration to the low concentration all of you type it in the chat section all of you type it in the chat section what exactly is the diffusion yes what exactly is the diffusion what exactly is the diffusion you know that it is the movement right movement of molecules from their high concentration to the low concentration. So, can I say that the movement along or down the concentration gradient can I say so movement along and down the concentration gradient and you know that you know that here no, no energy will be used no energy will be used. So, it is going to be passive it is going to be passive the first point clear. So, along the concentration gradient the things will move right but no energy is used here right. So, obviously what will be mentioned the passive transport it is the passive transport. So, when it is simple diffusion we are not talking about the carrier proteins right but so we cannot say that that there can be some protein inhibitor that can inhibit it okay that can inhibit it you can take simple example there is a plant cell right the things will move as per the concentration gradient simple as that simple as that done but now there is one more word in the NCRT and that is the facilitated transport that is the facilitated transport what is it it is the facilitated transport are you getting my point facilitated whenever the word is facilitated means we are providing some facility we are providing a way now let us say you are just moving right you are just moving from one place to another you are just walking right now you want to go to let us say from a place to b I am I am telling you that yeah, yes you can use a cycle you can use the bike or a car right I am I am providing you a facility. So, whenever the word is facilitated whenever the word is facilitated so what do you have to keep in your head yes there will be the use of carrier protein right there will be the use of carrier protein and that carrier proteins are present in the plasma membrane that carrier proteins are present in the plasma membrane like see here you have the membrane here you have the carrier proteins. So, things will go from these carrier proteins. So, whatever cannot cross the plasma membrane directly whatever cannot cross the plant layers uh, plant cell uh, walls directly right. So, obviously they need they need some carrier protein right and whenever a carrier protein is used for a transport the word that we are going to use is the facilitated transport and when the word is facilitated facilitated diffusion. So, what do you have to mention see ultimately it is diffusion. So, the things are going to be same right that it will be passive things will move along the concentration gradient but here the extra thing is use of carrier protein but here the extra thing is use of carrier protein. So, you can see it directly from NCRT we are going to discuss that right but so you can check it out right. So, facilitated means the carrier protein will be used. So, now you tell me but you tell me tell me clearly if we are using any of the carrier protein. So, obviously the, uh, we are going to consider two concepts the one is of saturation the one is of saturation and another is of protein inhibitor. See if you are attending my sessions now there is you have to come up with a mindset that you are not going to cram the things you need to understand the logic behind ok. And if you understand the logic behind you will be able to retain it for a longer time 
that should be your agenda see if you people focus uh, that today it's first of may and on 7th of may we are having the exam so you will not be able to focus here right you will not be able to focus here so what you people need to do right now you just need to keep one thing in your head that today i am revising plant physiology for the 3 hours i am revising plant physiology for 3 hours this is what you need to focus okay so if you will if you will keep that thing in your head na that ma'am she is teaching us she is teaching plant physiology one of the most important topic you know last year in neet 2022 13 questions were there from plant physiology and from human physiology 12 questions were there so plant physiology and human physiology are having almost equal weightage maybe you will get more questions from plant physiology rather than human physiology so only thing that you need to keep in your head is that i am revising plant physiology for my exam do not focus on the date do not focus on anything else otherwise this class will be a waste for you because you you are not totally into this class okay you are not totally into this class and i know i know a teacher is a i am a teacher no doubt but i was a student as well i'm still a student okay so that is why you are not able to focus and you will keep scrolling the youtube uh, once you will check my session then you will go to another teacher's session then another session so ultimately you are going to waste your time do you want to waste your time do you want to waste your time tell me your chemistry and physics will be taken care na but if you while reading biology if you will think of physics and chemistry then again waste while reading physics and chemistry if you will think of biology again time wasted okay don't be no need to get nervous take a chill pill right do some yoga right now breathe in breathe out breathe out breathe in breathe out that is going to help you out for sure that is going to help you out that is my way to revise anything and just before exam even we feel so anxious na uh, you know i used to do that thing again and again sometimes i check one subject then another then another and we end up in doing nothing we end up in doing nothing so please focus here and just focus that you are revising a very important topic for the plan for the neat examination and yes it's worth spending time it's worth spending time now focus here guys so as i'm saying that when it comes to the facilitated transport the saturation and the protein inhibitor these are the two concepts that we need to discuss so when it comes to the saturation now see there is a cell and if you want to enter within the cell there are some certain protein there are certain proteins that will help so obviously if all that proteins will be occupied the transport is going to be the transport will be slow right if all the proteins are occupied so yes when it is the facilitated diffusion when it is the active transport the concept of saturation will be considered because protein channels are helping in the entry or in the exit now what about these protein inhibitors see carrier proteins are basically the protein channel so any anything any compound any inhibitor that can destroy this protein channel can destroy the transport right can destroy the transport this is what you need to remember now see here different different ways of facilitated diffusion it is from ncrt uniport when only single thing will be taken in right bachche antiport anti means opposite from one carrier protein a molecule is entering b molecule is leaving so antiport anti opposite in opposite direction two things are moving together so these two are the examples of co transport uni transport means only one molecule will move from that carrier protein at uh, at a particular time and when you talk about the co transport co means together co means together right so antiport when two things are moving in opposite direction a is moving within the cell b is moving out from the cell symport sim together a and b together they are moving in the same direction this is what you need to remember right bachche and then comes this table so yes for sure question will come from this particular table for sure question will come from this particular table right bachche so here you can see when it is the simple diffusion it requires special membrane protein no 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 special membrane proteins are required for simple diffusion but for facilitated even for active transport it is required right for active transport it is required now highly selective which one is going to be highly selective the one which are using the carrier proteins because that carrier proteins will not allow everyone to come in right 
compatibility should be there. Like let's say you are going to a marriage, right? You need that invitation card, na? You need that invitation card. You cannot always invite there. You cannot be an intruder there. You need that invitation card. Same as the case here. So if any molecule wants to go in or out from the cell by a carrier protein, so compatibility should be there. Right? Compatibility should be there. So that is why here in both the transports, yes is there. And saturation will also be considered when carrier protein is used. Right, bache? So only thing that you need to remember in the case of active transport is A for active, A for active, A for ATP, A for against. Right? Right? Now ABC should not be like that A for a apple. No. A for active, A for ATP, A for against. In active transport, ATP will be used to move the things against the concentration gradient that is from low concentration to high concentration, low concentration to the high concentration. So this table is clear because question will come from this particular table. Question will come from this particular table. And yes, moreover, bache, moreover, statement based questions can come from this particular table. Right, bache? Right, bache? Dan, bache? Okay. Diffusion in solid is more likely rather than of solids. Uh, Karthike, first of all, it is not chemistry. And second thing, it is very easy. Diffusion in solids means solid, right? Compaction property is there in the case of solid. So molecules can move internally. You cannot say that from one solid to another solid things are moving. So you better ask this question from Asim, sir. Okay. <coughs> now, next. The another favorite question of examiner, apoplast and simplast. What do you know about apoplast and simplast? What do you know about apoplast and simplast? Another favorite concept of examiner. Another favorite concept of examiner, apoplast and simplast. Now, in the case of plants, right, whenever you talk about the movement of the things, one thing that you all know that in the leaves, photosynthesis will occur. In the leaves, photosynthesis will occur. This is what you know. Right, this is what you know. The second thing that you know is uh, the stomata by which exchange of gases will be there and the transpiration will be there. Do you remember that? Yes or no? Yes or no? Ma'am, it is in bio. Okay, if it is in bio, I'll explain it. But let me finish this particular topic. Okay, so tell me one thing. Tell me one thing. You know about stomata, yes or no? You know about stomata, yes or no? Ha, it is in line in NCRT. Okay, let me explain first. See, if you are confused about it, ki diffusion is, let me finish this first, diffusion is, right, in solids, rather than from solids to solid, it is very simple. See, solids, compact they are, right, they have that property, they are compact, right, they are compact. When you talk about the liquids, the molecules, they are, uh, they are having, you know, space in between, they are having that gaps in between, right, when you talk about the gases, in uh, the distance between the molecule is much higher. You know that, right? Now, solids, they are compact. They are what? They are compact. Now, in the case of solid, let's say this is, there is something solid here. Now, see, molecules are like this, right? So, they can, if, let's say it is a particular solid, right? So, molecules can move within from it, from one place to another, from one place to another, simple, right? Let's say these are two solid. Here, you cannot expect the diffusion, right? Right? So, diffusion in solid is more rather than from one solid to another. Let's say this is solid A, this is solid B. So, you cannot say that the things are moving from here to here, but here, but what you guys can expect that things can move here within, within the solid, simple, right? Simple. Okay, any doubt here now? Done? But I think this is the question that we can ask from Vasim sir. He can explain it. Right? So, at least he can explain only one question from the biology. Huh, he can explain this particular question from the biology. Otherwise, his biology is too bad. Done? Done, done, done? Yes, Ankita, that will be enough. Okay? Now, huh? Uphill and downhill, but it is again simple. Uphill, uphill, low to high, low to high, uphill. You are moving up, low to high against the concentration gradient. Downhill, like this, like this, right? High to low, high to low, high to low. Done, bache? Clear? clear so now the next concept that we are discussing it that how do plants absorb water a very simple thing is we know about the stomata right 
so you know that when it comes to the somata from that stomatal aperture gases exchange will be there isn't it gases exchange will be there isn't it and now and another thing that you know is ki loss of water in the form of vapors loss of water in the form of vapors right and what is this this is the transpiration you are well aware of it right you are well aware of it so whenever we talk about the transport of plants we consider the concept of transpiration as well we consider the concept of transpiration pull as well which we explain in cohesion and tension theory isn't it which we explain in cohesion and tension theory remember cohesion and tension theory that dixon and jolly transpiration pull theory we discuss that right and we know that because of transpiration because of the loss of water in the form of vapors right the water will be pulled up right there is a kind of pull that is going to right there will be a kind of pull that will be maintained in the xylem column and the water will come up you know that you know that yes or no do you know that yes or no quickly tell me in the chat section i want you people to revert this is the first thing now what is the second thing the root pressure we even discuss root pressure when we talk about the water transport root pressure root pressure that negative negative or positive root pressure what is it negative hydrostatic pressure or positive hydrostatic pressure what is it tell me quickly in the chat section everyone what is this root pressure the negative hydrostatic pressure or the positive hydrostatic pressure anyone in the class anyone in the class then i'll come to the simplest and epoplast i told you we'll be discussing the most important concept bachche but we are going to mix we are going to relate all the topics okay so that you can revise the plant physiology in a better way so tell me what is root pressure is it a positive hydrostatic pressure or negative is it a positive hydrostatic pressure or negative guys you really need to check the things you really need to revise plant physiology both how can it be both guys root pressure root pressure what is it positive or negative majority of people are saying negative is it so that is your homework just check it once very bad you need to revise the things properly you need to revise the things properly neutral ah ha ha it is not at all neutral guys revise it i'll come to this now so uh, do you know about the transpiration pull there is a pull there is a pull the water will come up this is what you know very general things and very general questions are going to come from this part but the most important thing for the neat paper is the apoplast and symplast right apoplast and symplast although it is related to the water absorption part but you need to focus on this apoplast and symplast and we are going to use the ncrt for that so you know that roots they are going to absorb most of the water that will go into the plant right bachche from soil they will take up the water and then they will pass it to the plant and by a xylem we are going to do it and <coughs> it is the unidirectional way right bachche so the responsibility of absorption of water and mineral is the function of root here we know it very well whenever we talk about the root you know that from the epidermal cells some outgrowths will come and these are the root hairs they are going to absorb the water they are going to absorb the water isn't it they are going to absorb the water so root hairs are bachche thin walled cylinder extension right they are made up of epidermis i told you already so water is absorbed with the help of mineral salt solutes that is why we always use the word sap we are not just saying water we are saying water plus minerals water plus minerals right bachche this is what we are saying this is what we are saying so how will it occur see water absorption by the root here is purely by diffusion purely by diffusion right actually roots are having a very good mechanism root hairs are having a very good mechanism what they used to do actively they will absorb some minerals and then water will come right this is the trick this is the trick they say let's say i'll give uh, i'll i'll quote one example uh just take one example that uh, you want you 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 want something from your sibling right you want something from your sibling you know that they are not going to give give that to you directly hai na hai na they are not going to give that to you directly you are you you are asking them something they will not do it but if you will change your way a bit 
right change your, you'll be like i don't like this i don't want that then definitely they'll give you that thing kyo you don't want that then surely i'm going to give you same is the case here what these root hairs are going to do let's say here you are having the root here right it is in the soil so in comparison right bachche in comparison to the soil here root cells are having more solutes so what is going to happen basically that solutes right many solutes mostly solutes will be absorbed actively mostly solutes will be absorbed actively solutes will be absorbed actively actively means by using energy by using atp the first point now niru what is going to happen so if let's say here the solute concentration will increase definitely by a diffusion water will come in yes or no by a diffusion water will come in yes or no yes yes or no very good no uh, right right yes or no let's say here you are having a cell if you are actively if you will actively transport ions within minerals within solutes within so definitely water will come simply by a diffusion water will be like here the situation is hypertonic i need to go in so ultimately whenever it comes to the water absorption the water absorption is the water absorption is by a diffusion means it is passive it is passive right so here you can see once water is absorbed by the root hairs as i said by a diffusion it can move move into deeper layer by two ways one is apoplast another is symplast one is apoplast another is symplast right bachche so when you talk about the apoplast right so here basically what is going to happen it is the system of adjacent cell walls cell walls which are dead cell walls which are dead so let's take the example of two cells here you know that in the case of plants you are having the cell wall and secondary cell wall they are dead cell wall they are considered as dead so whenever you talk about the apoplast so you can say that from dead spaces water is moving from intercellular spaces water is moving right from intercellular spaces water is moving from dead spaces water is moving this is what you need to remember this is what you need to remember right so apoplast is a system of adjacent cell wall that is continuous throughout the plant except at casparian strips which is again a pyq again a pyq so whenever you talk about the water absorption simply from root here by a diffusion then we need to pass the water to the deeper layers and for the deeper layer apoplast and symplast is the way apoplast and symplast pathway is going to follow so apoplast from the dead part like from the cell wall from the intercellular spaces so now see intercellular spaces there will be no hurdle there in the cell wall there will be no hurdle there so water will move very quickly this is what you need to remember so both hypoplast and symplast the water movement is the wo water movement will be there it is simply along the concentration gradient that is diffusion is followed but but in the apoplast it is faster in comparison to the symplast in the apoplast it is faster in comparison to the symplast and apoplast right so water will move uh, majorly by apoplast only one exception is there that is casparian strips right so here in the root cells in the endodermis casparian strips are present which are water impermeable they will not allow the movement of water by a by a apoplast at that time symplast will be followed so the best thing to explain is this diagram the best way by which we can understand this concept is this diagram so bachche from this diagram again your mcq will come okay again your mcq will come from this particular diagram okay so what you have to remember firstly you just need to remember the sequence right so whenever we draw the root section of root so this is how we go na epidermis is there then an epidermis is there then you know that cortex will be there the ground tissue the cortex will be there right bachche then what do we have we have the endodermal and endodermal layer right so endodermal layer is having these cells so these cells are having the casparian strip so you just need to remember this concept as well so here you can see epidermis cortex endodermis pericycle outermost epidermis cortex endodermis pericycle so two type of concepts can come from this part two type of concepts can come from this part one is from the diagram they can ask you the question from the diagram they can ask you the question and secondly secondly bachche right secondly they can just ask you the flow of water movement right this is what they can ask so just focus here just check it here the epidermis cortex endodermis pericycle so here 
when the water is moving from this part that is from cell wall which is comparatively faster because no resistance will be offered here so this is apoplast but bachche when it is symplast when the word is symplast 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 so so cytoplasm which is the living thing protoplasm is considered here right so in that case water will move from this cytoplasm via this plasmodes metal connections so what do you need to remember here see obviously cytoplasm in the cytoplasm water is there in the cytoplasm organelles are also there in the cytoplasm you know that other constituents are also there right other constituents are also there isn't it isn't it so whenever there will be the water movement from this particular part na whenever there will be the water movement from this particular part na so obviously again it will be also as per concentration gradient but it will take some time in comparison to apoplast apoplast is like empty spaces are there water is moving symplast is like crowded spaces are there then there is the movement right right and even if you have to move from let's say there is a traffic on the road obviously then you will take some time to reach to a particular distance but if there is less traffic or no traffic so obviously you will reach quickly same is the case here so symplast means a lot of traffic is there right you can consider the bangalore example full of roads are full of vehicles and all traffic is there that is all this is what you need to remember so after so when it comes to the casparian strips because they are water impermeable depositions are there subrin deposition is there that will not allow the water movement so at this point of time symplast will be preferred and then when it comes to the xylem so you know that xylem xylem is having tracheids xylem is having vessels xylem is having xylem fibers even xylem is having parenchyma so out of this parenchyma rest all are dead right out of this parenchyma rest all are dead so when you talk about the xylem even again here also you can say apoplast is followed is that clear question will come from this part is that clear bachche question will come from this part so here you guys can see these important highlighted point that when it comes to the symplast system the system of interconnected protoplast so neighboring cells are connected through cytoplasmic strand that is known as plasmodes metal in animal cells we talk about the gap junctions in plant cells we talk about the plasmodes metal this is what you people need to remember so the water movement is here from the cytoplasm so i can say that na in symplast intercellular movement is there through plasmodes metal intercellular movement is there through plasmodes metal definitely this mcq will come in your paper definitely this mcq will come in your paper so whenever whenever it is the symplast always remember from plasmodes metal water movement will be there so it is intercellular movement right right their cytoplasm so it's a uh, symplastic movement the water travels through the cell their cytoplasm intercellular movement is through the plasmodes metal clear bachche clear bachche right so in apoplast it can be extracellular you can use the word extracellular here right bachche done any doubt any doubt but in both the scenarios movement is as per the concentration gradient along the concentration gradient along the concentration gradient this is what you need to remember so if you have any doubt from this part do let me know do let me know ha huh? do let me know sure is that clear question will come from this part so rest you need to focus on the sequence as well i told you already about the casparian strips impervious to water bachche right because subrin depositions are present here done subrin depositions are present here and do check this particular diagram as well okay do check this particular diagram as well so any other doubt bachche any other doubt from from this particular part i'll explain one more thing that is mycorrhiza i hope you all remember the mycorrhiza which is a symbiotic association it is the symbiotic association right bachche in between the roots of the higher plants plus fungal hyphae and if you remember that fungus that is glomus glomus right that fungus is basically the glomus clear bachche the glomus it is done bachche done so you can say that some plants have additional structures that help in the water and mineral absorption the answer is mycorrhiza we discussed that in the case of pinus pine trees pinus plus glomus hyphae is that clear is that clear so any doubt from this part bachche any doubt from this part question will come from this part okay sure and uh, yes 
लेट मी कंक्लूड नाउ बच्चे दिस इज नॉट गुड इफ यू आर नॉट एबल टू रिमेंबर सच बेसिक थिंग्स वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द रूट प्रेशर इट इज द पॉजिटिव हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर ओके इट इज द पॉजिटिव हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर एंड वेन यू टॉक अबाउट द ट्रांसपीरेशन द प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू बी नेगेटिव द प्रेशर इज गोइंग टू बी नेगेटिव when you talk about the transpiration pull na then it is the negative hydrostatic pressure because you are pulling something it is root pressure there is a kind of push there is a kind of push okay okay so let's say this is a root cell and here you are having your root here so obviously what is the point here just a minute so because it is hypertonic so water will come by a diffusion so it's just like a push here that push is going to that push will help in the water movement so root pressure is the positive hydrostatic pressure and when it comes to the transpiration pull the negative hydrostatic pressure will be created in that um xylem column done done do remember that sakshi water potential is very easy right when it comes to the water potential you know that what you have to consider you have to consider the solute potential plus pressure potential and when it is the solute potential it is always negative it is always a negative but when you talk about the pressure potential mostly it is positive mostly it is positive right so what is this water potential equals to solute potential plus uh, the pressure potential water the movement of water is always from higher water potential to the lower water potential right so when you talk about the solute potential here it is mainly the function of solute right so it is always a negative always a negative it is but when you people talk about the pressure potential mostly positive but in that xylem column as i said it is negative in the xylem column it is negative any doubt any doubt done done okay now the next next important topic here is the pressure flow or mass flow hypothesis pressure flow and mass flow hypothesis two to three questions can come from this particular part two to three questions can come from this particular part here we are talking about the translocation of food right your sugar which is organic right sucrose we will discuss here sucrose we will discuss here okay bachche so the accepted mechanism used for the translocation of sugar from source to sink is the pressure flow hypothesis also known as bulk flow hypothesis also known as mass flow hypothesis right right also known as mass flow hypothesis bachche let me finish that top 10 topics and then i will cater your doubt if it is related to dpd if it is related to water potential i'll cater it but as of now we should focus on our target right let's keep it directional let's keep it directional let's finish out these topics you know that there are there are so many things in the plant physiology session there are so 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 many things in the plant physiology session you know it isn't it isn't it so right now we are running out of time we cannot we cannot revise each and every line from ncert but whatever is important we should focus there first okay we should focus there first and if you listen to me very carefully you can ensure your 50 plus marks which is very important right which is very important so guys the energy and the number of likes should be more okay 1000 plus likes should be there by the end of the session and if you are new do subscribe our channel as well ah done done so pressure flow hypothesis from this topic two to three questions can come so as i said translocation of sugars i am uh, repeating this again when do we use the word translocation we use the word translocation for long distance transport we use the word translocation when xylem and phloem is involved when xylem and phloem is involved right bachche so glue and what is the meaning of source and sink source where food is going to form where food is going to where food is present sink where food will be transported where food will be stored clear bachche where food will be stored is that clear is that clear so pressure flow hypothesis we are discussing so glucose is prepared at the source source here leaves where photosynthesis will occur but what is the point that you people need to remember here what is the point that you people need to remember here kindly note down bachche no doubt glucose will form but it is not the glucose that is translocated it is important bachche it is not the glucose that is translocated your glucose will be converted to sucrose your glucose will be converted to sucrose and what is sucrose sucrose is a diacaccharide it is made up of two sugars 
Remember, it is made up of glucose plus fructose. So, it is the sucrose that is translocated and again it is an important MCQ. It is an important MCQ. Is that clear? It is an important MCQ. Right, bache? Right. And what is the another part? See, sucrose, as I said, disaccharide, glucose plus fructose. Right, bache? Right, bache? Why, why, why in the case of plants, the sucrose is translocated? Because it is a, it is a non-reducing sugar. It is a non-reducing sugar. Are you getting my point? It is a non-reducing sugar. It is not reactive. That is why it will be translocated. It will be translocated. Again, important MCQ. Done, bache. Done, bache. So, do mark it. So, what is happening here? What is happening here? Sugar is moved in the form of sucrose into the companion cells and then into the living phloem sieve tube cells by active transport. Another MCQ. What is going to happen? See, here let's say you are having a source, leaf. So, adjacent to it, you are having the companion cells here. Companion cell here. The next here is the sieve tube cell. Sieve tube elements are present. But do you remember that this sieve tube element is just like the RBC? At maturity, it is enucleated. Do you remember? At maturity, it is de-enucleated. It is without nucleus. So, what is going to happen? Firstly, the loading and the unloading. So, these type of question will come in your exam. So, from source to sink, we are going to translocate the organic food. It will be translocated in the form of sucrose. Is that MCQ clear? Is that MCQ clear? Yes or no, everyone? I want to see the energy in the chat section. If your teachers can be so energetic, you students need to be energetic. You people need to be energetic. Quickly tell me. The first question clear. From source to sink, the food will move. The food is translocated in the form of sucrose because it is a non-reactive sugar. It is a non-reducing sugar. Second thing is that the another important topic from this particular part is loading and unloading. Loading and unloading. Loading and unloading. Right. Now, as per my analysis, question will come from this part. Definitely in 2023, question will come from this part. Okay. Okay. So, as it is mentioned in the NCRT, the sugar is then moved in the form of sucrose into companion cells and then into the sieve tubes by active transport. So, firstly, the sugar will move here, then from here to here. Right. Here to here. And how? By the use of ATP. Active transport is there. So, for the loading of the sugar active transport even from the unloading active transport is there right active transport is there is that clear active transport is there and why are we calling it as mass flow because things are not moving individually here so let's say it is basically the bulk flow together the things will move from one point to another one point to another one point to another so obviously quantity it is the quantity that uh, that will go away from one place to another right bache right bache in the bulk things are moving this is what you need to remember the first point clear now what is the second point here now when there is a loading at the source hypertonic conditions will be produced in the phloem it is very simple it is very simple here now if in the phloem you are putting a lot of sugars so obviously the concentration of solute is going to be more here. And if concentration of solute is going to be more here, so now you know that xylem and phloem, together they are present as bundles. Together they are present as bundles. Together they are present as bundles. So what is going to happen here? From xylem, water will move here to the phloem. Right? Because hypertonic conditions are there. Again, you know that things will move. Again, here the pressure is more. Here the pressure is less. Here the pressure gradient is more. Here the pressure gradient is less. The solute, the sugar will move from this point to this point. Along with that water will also move. So this is the basic movement when you talk about the bulk flow hypothesis. Right, bache? So water in the adjacent, water in the adjacent xylem will move into the phloem by osmosis. Again, osmosis is a movement of water, movement of solvent from its higher concentration to the lower concentration through a semi-permeable membrane. Right, through a semi-permeable membrane. Is that clear? So, as osmotic pressure builds up, phloem sap will move to the areas of low pressure as I said. So, at the sink, osmotic pressure must be reduced. Again, active transport is necessary to move 
the sucrose out of phloem cell into the cells right into the sink cells basically. So, again here also ATP will be used. So, can I say that whether it is the loading of sugar or it is the unloading of sugar ATP is used. Can we say so? Yes, bacho. Can we say so? Yes. Dan bache. Dan bache. So, obviously, as sugars will be removed from the phloem, again, again, the water will move back to the xylem because again the conditions will be hypotonic then. Done. So, this is what you need to remember here. Done, bache. So, phloem tissue is composed of sieve tube cells. I told you they are going to form long columns with the holes, with the sieves, right? That are the sieve plates. So, cytoplasmic strand pass through the holes in the sieve plates. So, forming a continuous filament that is all. So, this is how the question will, will be asked in the paper. So, if there is any doubt do let me know. So, here you can see sugars enter the sieve tubes, water follows by osmosis, there will be high TP, there will be high turgor pressure because water movement is there, that water is going to exert a pressure on the cell wall. So, high TP will be there. So, if I will be the examiner, what type of question I can ask from this point? I can put simply A here. I will write sugar enter sieve tube, water follows by osmosis. The pressure here will be, turgor pressure here will be high or low. So, what should be your answer, bache? What should be your answer? What should be the answer here? Tell me, what should be the answer? High turgor pressure high turgor pressure right bache so here again sugar leaf seep tube water follows by osmosis sugar solution flows to regions of low turgor pressure so from high tp movement will be there to low tp that's all clear clear okay so loss of solute produces a high water potential that part is done okay and bache, I think you know about the girdling experiment, isn't it? Which used to show that how water will, uh, how sugars will flow from the phloem. Remember this girdling experiment on the trunk of a tree, a ring of bark up to a depth of phloem layer will be removed. So, in the absence of downward movement of food, the portion of bark above the ring, it will become swollen, right? Right. So, the simple experiment shows that phloem is the tissue responsible for the translocation, right bache? done any doubt any doubt and I am going to make a trick video in that trick video I will provide you the tricks for the morphology part and tricks for remembering the macro and micronutrients part right macro and micronutrients all part done done so this is what we need to focus from the transport and plant now, now the next chapter that we are going to discuss is plant growth and development is that clear as i said the most important topics we are going to revise today so this marathon will not be for you know uh, it it will be in between 3 hours to the 4 hours we'll try to finish it within 3 hours okay the first thing second thing is that in that marathon the topics that i have mentioned in the video top 60 topics to score that much marks in uh, biology Oh, that particular topics will be discussed here, okay? And if you will check all my sessions, whatever sessions I have taken so far, I have completed that important topics in that sessions, okay? I have completed that topics in that session. So, no need to spam here. So, please revise it, okay? Please revise it. Right now, I am just highlighting the most important topics only. So, please focus because biology is making 50% of the syllabus. And did you check that video in which I told you that how to break the tie in the NEET exam? Huh? Yes? Check kiya tha? How to break the tie in the NEET examination? That is also important. It is going to decide your rank. So, biology is the key. Biology is very important. Biology is very important. So, let us not waste time. Let us focus here. Okay. Let us focus here. Ma'am, from 60 topics, marks. Are firstly complete that 60 topics? Then we will talk about the marks. Okay. Firstly, complete that 60 topics. PGRs are not at all confusing. That are very easy. We will discuss it today. Done? 
Okay, so now let's revise the plant growth and development. So, okay, basically, uh, uh, firstly, not the plant growth and development. Firstly, let's let's talk about that mineral nutrition. Then we'll talk about the plant growth and development. Okay, firstly, let's talk about the mineral nutrition. Then we'll discuss the plant growth and development okay firstly the mineral nutrition so from this mineral nutrition the most important topic is the uh, biological nitrogen fixation we'll start from the nitrogen cycle but yes biological nitrogen fixation is the important topic and another type of question that come from this particular chapter is they can ask you which iron is used here which iron is used there like i quote i'll quote one example like when you know that large ribosome and the small ribosome how how can we join them they will join at the time of protein synthesis but with the help of magnesium ion with the help of magnesium ion second question second important question if you remember boron boron is important for the pollen germination remember this thing boron is important for the right boron is important for the pollen germination do you remember that like zinc is important for the auxin synthesis your iron is important for the biosynthesis of chlorophyll Magnesium is the central metal ion of chlorophyll. So, question like this used to come. So, for that part, what you have to do? You just need to solve the PYQs. Okay? You just need to solve the PYQs. Now, let's discuss the things from the nitrogen cycle. So, apart from carbon, hydrogen and oxygen, you know that nitrogen is very important. Nitrogen is very, very, very important. Nitrogen rich soil is more fertile. You know that, isn't it? And even when you talk about the nitrogen, it is important for the synthesis of amino acid, synthesis of protein, synthesis of that nucleic acids, obviously. Isn't it? Isn't it? So, amino acids, proteins, hormones, chlorophylls, and many of the vitamins. For many of the vitamin, nitrogen is important. So, again, from this particular line, MCQ can come. So, you need to focus here that even for the chlorophyll, right, nitrogen is the main constituent. Even for the chlorophyll, nitrogen is the main constituent. Is that clear? Is that clear? So, plants, they are going to compete with microbes for the limited nitrogen, right, which is available there in the soil. So, bache, one question can come from this part. So, whenever you talk about the nitrogen fixation, there are different, different ways, bache, right, even from the lightning, you know that nitrogen is going to come. But what we have to focus majorly, we have to focus on the biological nitrogen fixation. What we have to focus majorly, we need to focus on the biological nitrogen fixation, biological nitrogen fixation. So, nitrogen is a limiting nutrient for both natural and agriculture ecosystem first of all this is what you need to keep in your head it is limiting it is limiting nutrient it is not in very 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 large quantity it is a limiting nutrient what is it it is a limiting nutrient right bache so it exists as two nitrogen atoms joined by a very strong triplet uh, triple covalent bond we know it very well right so the conversion of nitrogen to ammonia is the nitrogen fixation so now what do you have to do just take out your pen and paper and note down this nitrogen to ammonia this is the nitrogen fixation but in exam we mix these things we are not able to differentiate that what exactly is the denitrification what exactly is the nitrogen fixation what exactly is the ammonification so this is what you people need to do right this is what you people need to do so n2 to ammonia n2 to ammonia this is the nitrogen fixation all of you just mention it in the chat section quickly just mention this point in the chat section jaldi mention this point in the chat section quick quick done so ultimately conversion of nitrogen to ammonia is the nitrogen fixation conversion of ammo nitrogen to ammonia is the nitrogen fixation right bache so in nature lightning uv radiation they are going to provide the energy to convert nitrogen to nitrogen oxides you know it in industrial combustion forest fire automobile exhaust power generating stations they are the source of atmospheric nitrogen oxide clear so from this diagram you can see atmospheric nitrogen Biological nitrogen fixation, industrial nitrogen fixation, it will provide ammonia, right? It will provide ammonia. So, whenever it is the nitrogen fixation, N2 will be converted to ammonia. N2 will be converted to ammonia, NH3 will come. And when it is the electrical nitrogen fixation or denitrification, NO3 negative will form. Clear, bache? NO3 negative will form. Is that clear? 
yes or no do mention in the chat section be quick tell me in the chat section quickly is that clear tell me oh oh done done so nitrogen fixation it is nh3 that is ammonia and here when it is the electrical nitrogen fixation and uh, nitrification it is no3 negative it is nitrate it is nitrate clear clear so now this reaction see so decomposition of nitrogen of dead plants and animals into ammonia is the ammonification so if n2 if n2 will form ammonia it is nitrogen fixation but 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 when organic nitrogen of dead plants and animals is converted to ammonia it is ammonification so you really need to differentiate that right you really need to differentiate that okay so decomposition of organic nitrogen of dead plants and animal is ammonification another important mcq right another important mcq and as per as per me two questions will come from this part only two questions will come from this part only okay ओके बच्चे सो सी जस्ट लुक एट इट सो हियर यू कैन सी द रिएक्शन बच्चे सो अल्टीमेटली व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन द समोनिया सम ऑफ इट इज वॉलेटाइल इट विल फॉर्म द वेपर्स इट विल री एंटर द एटमोस्फियर राइट बट मेजोरिटी ऑफ अमोनिया विल बी कन्वर्टेड टू नाइट्रेट मेजोरिटी ऑफ इट विल बी कन्वर्टेड टू नाइट्रेट सो दीज टू रिएक्शन आर इंपॉर्टेंट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फ्रॉम अमोनिया नाइट्राइट विल फॉर्म एंड फ्रॉम दैट नाइट्राइट नाइट्रेट विल फॉर्म nitrate will form so this is your homework you have to remember these two reactions because as per me question will come from this part so are you people ready for it yes are you all ready for it tell me are you people ready for it will you do it pakka promise promise ki yes ma'am we are going to do that we will remember it and just after the session you have to mention these two reactions in the comment section in the comment section and without cheating without cheating you have to mention it so ammonia firstly into nitrite then into nitrate then firstly into nitrite then into nitrate right bachche right so see decaying biomass of plants of animals it is going to form the ammonia that is ammonification okay that is ammonification again that ammonia will come in that soil pool firstly nitrite then nitrate nitrite nitrate nitrite nitrate okay okay so let me ask you one question so here you are having nh3 what will come here at a and what will come here at b quickly answer it in the chat section what will come at a what will come at b quickly type it in the chat section i'll tell you the trick of uh, the uh, microbes that are going to convert it quickly what is at a what is at b what is at a what is at b what is at a what is at b exactly at a it is going to be at b it is okay so the sequence should be clear right so first ammonia will form the nitrite ammonia is going to form the nitrite no2 negative right so it is so co it is so co okay it is so co so ultimately hmm it is two so co this is the trick it is two so co and three ba this is how i remember it right it is two so co and three ba it is 2 soco and 3 ba 2 soco 3 ba 2 soco 3 ba if you will repeat it you will store it here okay 2 soco 3 ba 2 means no2 negative nitrite 3 means no3 negative nitrate ba right and here soco so soco is for this nitro so so soco nitro word will be common here so so means nitro so monaz nitroso mona so co co cocus it is cocus it is so nitro word is common 
in both. So, what is the trick? 2 soko and 3 ba. 2 soko and 3 ba. 2 soko and 3 ba. This is what you need to do. Question will come from this part for sure. Right? Question will come from this part for sure. Right? I am writing it again. 2 soko, 3 ba. 2 soko, 3 ba. Done? Done? So, repeat it in the chat section all of you. Type it in the chat section. 2 soko, 3 ba. 2 soko, 3 ba. Do it. Do it. Ashraf, ma'am, molecular basis. Ma'am, post one video on molecular basis. Ma'am, post one video on the genetics. Ma'am, post one video on biotech. And then whenever I used to take a session on that, then you people don't watch that. You know, that is bad, yeah. That is bad. I have already shared the PDF for the human physiology in the telegram. You can check it again. Done? So, nitrate will form the nitrate. Nitrobacter it is. Nitrobacter it is. Done, bache. So, these are the chemoautotrophs, right? These are, they are using the chemicals for their own food. So, it is the chemoautotroph. This is the nitrification. Okay, nitrite to nitrate is the nitrification. So, yes, question will come from this part. Okay, question will come from this part. So, soko 3 ba. Soko 3 ba. So, nitrosomonas. Nitrococcus. Here it's nitro vector. Done. Done. Okay. Done. So then you know that nitrate will be absorbed by the plant. It will be transported to leaves, right? And in the leaves again, this nitrate will be reduced to the ammonia. It will be reduced to the ammonia, and finally, amine group of amino acid will form. Right, bache? Right, bache? So nitrate in the soil, it can also be reduced to nitrogen by the process of denitrification. It is very simple. Nitrate to nitrogen, denitrification. Uh, nitrogen to ammonia, ammonification. Nitrogen from dead plant biomass and animal biomass is going to form, it is going to form ammonia. That is ammonification. Okay. And denitrification for denitrification, it's pseudomonas and thiobacillus. It is again the important MCQ. Right? Right? It is again the important MCQ. Done, bache? Done, bache? Actually, I had one trick for it, but now I just forgot it. Literally. It was related to some DTPs, but now I forgot it. Daily test, ha, daily test paper, daily test paper, DTP means daily test paper. So, T, D here is denitrification, T here is your thiobacillus, P here is pseudomonas, P here is pseudomonas. So, you can write down these tricks, DTP, I just forgot, DTP. So, denitrification is thiobacillus and pseudomonas, it is thiobacillus and pseudomonas, that's all, that's all. So, can we revise it? Can we revise it? So, tell me when your ammonia will be converted to nitrite, which bacteria or which chemoautotrophs will be used? Okay, which bacteria and which chemoautotrophs will be used? Tell me. In which graph, Kartikin? Quickly just revise it. So, whenever your ammonia is converted to the nitrite, which chemoautotrophs are used? Quickly. Guys, answer, 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 be quick. Right? So, it is 2 soco. It is 2 soco. So, 2 NO2 negative nitrite plus 2 nitro, 2 times nitro we are, have to use. So, nitro soco, nitro somonas, nitro cocos, nitro somonas, nitro cocos. And when it is NO2 negative to NO3 negative, that is your de, uh, ha, nitrification, then at that time it is going to be nitrovector. And whenever there is the denitrification, thiobacillus and pseudomonas, thiobacillus and pseudomonas, thiobacillus and pseudomonas it is, right. So, the next is biological nitrogen fixation. So, you know that, bache, living organism can utilize the nitrogen in the form of N2. Yes, bache. so first of all, we have to convert it in the form of, ha, live, uh, we have to convert it into the form of nitrates. Nitrates will, 
help in the transport of this nitrogen and then in the plants again this nitrate will be converted to the ammonia that is what you only know so only certain prokaryotic species are capable of fixing nitrogen now we are talking about the biological nitrogen fixation so you know that reduction of nitrogen to ammonia by living organism is the biological nitrogen fixation this reaction is important this reaction is important. So, which enzyme is used here? Nitrogenase. Remember, bache, even when we talk about the biological classification, whenever we consider the example of nostoc and all, do you remember that? Whenever we consider the example of nostoc, remember? Nostoc, even at that time, we discuss the heterocyst, we talk about the heterocyst that it is the one which is responsible for nitrogen fixation. It is not having the oxygen in it, it is having the enzyme, right? Same as the case here. This is how you need to relate it, right? This is how you need to relate it. So, just focus here, bache. So, biological nitrogen fixation is conversion of this nitrogen to ammonia. So, which enzyme is used here? Nitrogenase. So, it works without oxygen, right? It works in anaerobic condition. It works without oxygen. That is what you need to remember. It works without oxygen. Right, bache? So, this enzyme is exclusively present in prokaryotes. What is the meaning of being exclusively present in prokaryotes? It will not be there in any of the eukaryotes. It is only there in the prokaryotes. It is only there in the prokaryotes. Right, bache? So, when you talk about the nitrogen fixing microbe, it could be free living or symbiotic, free living which are there in the soil only, right. Uh, they are not associated with any other organism. But when it is the symbiotic relationship, one is dependent on another. And the best example that we study uh, is the rhizobium, right. It is the rhizobium in the root nodules of leguminous plant. Remember that? Remember that, right? So, free living nitrogen fixing aerobic microbes, we have the example of azoto vector, we have the example of this vesernichia, while rhodospirillum is the anaerobic and bacillus is the free living. This, these are just the few examples. Okay, bache? Okay, bache? And you know that number of cyanobacteria, anabina, nostoc, I just gave you the example of nostoc, they are also free living nitrogen fixer. They are also free living nitrogen fixer. Right, bache? So, now how that symbiotic nitrogen fixation will be done? Two type of questions are going to come from this part. Two questions minimum will come from this part. Two questions minimum. So, the very first example is of rhizobium. Remember, bache, rhizobium, normally it is free living. It is free living. And but it will fix nitrogen only when it is in the symbiotic relationship. Is that clear? Is that clear? Right. So, here you can see whenever you talk about the symbiotic biological nitrogen fixing association, we know that this is the example that we even study in the class, I think 6th, 7th, 8th or 9th, isn't it? 6th, 7th, 8th or 9th. Right, bache? Right, bache? So, rhizobium, it's a road shaped bacteria, means bacillus. Right, right. So, with the root nodules of the leguminous plants, leguminous plants, right, right leguminous plants like your beans, like your peas, right, like your lentils. So, rhizobium, we will found it in the root nodules of these leguminous plants. Clear, bache? <coughs> Clear, bache? Done? Done? So, nodules are nothing, they are just the condensed structures. Nodules are nothing, they are just the condensed structure. We will see the nodule formation also. Clear? Clear? So, basically in these nodules, because of the presence of the pigment, leg hemoglobin, Right, because of the presence of the pigment, leg hemoglobin. Right, bache? Because it acts like the oxygen squenzer. Oxygen will not be there in that nodules. So, nitrogen, nitrogenase enzyme can work effectively there. Nitrogenase enzyme can form the, can fix the nitrogen there. So, this is what you need to remember. Okay, this is what you people need to remember. Done? Done. So, this is the first example you should mark in your short notes that it is a rhizobium which will live in the symbiotic association with the root nodules of leguminous plants like peas, beans, clovers and all. Clear? Clovers and all. And other example is of bache, elnus, right? Other example is of elnus and elnus is the non-leguminous plant. So, frankia and elnus, another is symbiotic association. Clear? Frankia and Elnus, another symbiotic association, uh, another symbiotic association. But what you have to remember that Elnus is non, right? Elnus is non-leguminous plants, right? Elnus is what? Non-leguminous plants. Is that clear? So, microbes, Frankia, they produce nitrogen fixing nodules on the roots of non-leguminous plants. Is that clear? 
Is that clear? So, one student was asking in the chat section, ma'am, that in the case of nostoc, in the heterocyst, do they have the uh, leg hemoglobin? No, bache, we are not discussing that. See, whenever uh, nostoc, here nostoc is not present in the symbiotic association. In the nostoc, you have a cell, heterocyst. In that heterocyst, you do not have PS2, you do not have photosystem 2. So, oxygen will not be liberated, oxygen will not be released. So, oxygen less conditions are there. Okay, oxygen less conditions are there. Okay, got it? Right, so that is why that enzyme nitrogenase work. So, always remember nitrogenase, nitrogenase, right? It is anaerobic enzyme. What is it? It is anaerobic enzyme. It is anaerobic enzyme. And one more trick is there, it is NAMO, NMO, right? One more trick is there, that is NAMO. What is it? It is NAMO. Nitrogenase, it needs that molybdenum. It needs that molybdenum. Okay? Okay? So, so today we learned two SOCO, three BA. Firstly, mention it. Mention three tricks <coughs> in the chat section. Two SOCO, <coughs> sorry, two SOCO, three BA, DTP. Mention these three tricks in the chat section. Two SOCO, three BA, DTP. Two SOCO, 3 bar DTP. Very good for the revision. And the fourth one is NAMO. Fourth one is NAMO. NMO. NMO. These are the four tricks that we are going to use in this particular chapter of mineral nutrition. Okay? Okay? Four tricks are there. All of you just mention that four tricks in the chat section. Quick. Quick. All of you just mention that four tricks in the chat section. Quick. Quick, four tricks in the chat section. It is very effective for the revision of the mineral nutrition chapter. Two SOCO, three bar DTP NAMO. Two SOCO, three bar DTP NAMO. So, before going to the examination hall, this is what you need to remember. Outside the examination hall, other students should think that what are they revising? Hannah, which topic is it? What are they revising? What we have missed? Okay, so it is two SOCO, three bar DTP and then NAMO, DTP and NAMO, done, quick, 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 all of you just be quick, done, so here the example rhizobium with the root nodules of the leguminous plant, Frankia with the root nodules of non-leguminous plant, this is what you need to remember, so now the word here is nodule, right, nodule formation is just like the kidnapping case, I always mention this. Right? I always mention this that nodule formation is just like the traffic uh, 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 kidnapping case. See bacteria. Initially the bacteria is present in the soil and it is not in the symbiotic relationship. So basically the root here they are going to release some chemicals that chemicals are going to attract the bacteria and slowly 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 these root hairs are going to form a hook around these bacteria. Why why am I saying that it looks like a kidnapping scene? They say let's say there is a there is a small kid right and a person used to give chocolate to that kid daily right daily a person used to give chocolate to that kid daily. So obviously you will be attracted right oh my god that uncle is very nice that auntie is very nice she or he or she used to give us the chocolates daily. So you will daily meet them and one day they will kidnap you. One day they will kidnap you. That is why, you know, our parents, they refuse that you should not take anything from the strangers. You don't know what is the agenda behind. Okay, I'm not saying that everyone is like that, but most of the time. Okay, our parents used to tell us, nah, no need to take anything from the strangers. No need to take anything. Matlab, uh, even if you talk to a five years old kid or six years old kid, they'll tell you the same thing. No, my mother refused me to take anything from you. Are you getting my point? So, same is the case here. Same thing will happen to this bacteria. So, initially root here was like, you see, I'm your friend, I'm giving you these chemicals, I'm giving you these chemicals, see, these chemicals are so good. So, bacteria will be attracted towards that root here and one day the root here will coil, the root here will form a hook and it will form the infection thread. All the bacteria will be taken in. All the bacteria will be taken in. Okay? Okay? So, it is the nodule formation. So, it is a purely, it is a kidnapping case. Done? 
done so let's revise it very quickly so as i said multiple interactions will form the nodule right bachche multiple interactions so first of all rhizobia will multiply and colonize the surrounding of roots and get attached to its epidermal and root hair cells why is it so because root hair is going to release some chemicals because of some chemicals this thing will occur right because of some chemicals this thing will occur done bachche and then the root hairs they will curl the bacteria invade the root hair the infection thread will be formed right so bacteria will be taken into the cortex of the root so initially the root hair was just releasing the chemicals was attracting the bacteria now the infection thread is there now root hair will be like i'll take the bacteria to my cortex i'll take the bacteria to my cortex okay i'm going to take it to my cortex right and here the nodule formation will be started okay so bacteria will be released from that thread right so the cells present here they will get differentiated they will get differentiated now they will start forming some nitrogen fixing cells okay so even bacteria used to release the chemicals but it is not like that only root will uh, release even the bacteria will release right bachche so specialized nitrogen fixing cells will form nodule thus formed it establish a direct vascular connection with the host so ultimately whenever bacteria will come cortical cells will start dividing again some few cells will get differentiated now they are the special cells in which the nitrogen fixation will be done now that nodule and that main plant is having that vascular connection right that vascular connection will also be established in them okay bachche okay bachche so nodule contains all the necessary biochemical components like your enzyme nitrogenase and even the leg hemoglobin so question can come from this leg hemoglobin so what is it it is oxygen squenzer it will eat up all the oxygen here it will eat up all the oxygen here so if there is no leg hemoglobin oxygen will still be there then nitrogenase will not be able to work so it is important for the activity of nitrogenase right it is important for the activity of nitrogenase so again you can see that nitrogenase is a mofe protein and catalyzes the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen to ammonia so don't confuse this part right so remember the trick namo so you will remember it molybdenum is present there done bachche so mofe is pre uh, present here in that enzyme right bachche matlab uh, ultimately uh, mofe protein is forming that enzyme clear clear so first stable product of nitrogen fixation is what it is the ammonia now when you talk about this particular reaction although you know many genes and everything they are involved but if they are not given in ncert we are not going to talk about that i think you know about that nif gene and all right bachche but we are not going to discuss that okay so the reaction you just need to remember see n2 it is n2 it is it is n2 what is it it is n2 so eight electrons eight protons and 16 atps are used so remember one thing when we are making two ammonia then 16 atps are used but if in the paper only single ammonia is mentioned so always remember eight atp will be used don't get confused here don't get confused here focus on this reaction properly right agay this reaction is important for your question so when it is n2 16 n2 will form two ammonia 2 nh3 16 atp are used but if they are mentioning only one ammonia so for one ammonia formation 8 atp will be used guys type it in the chat section quick all of you type it in the chat section quick quick type it in the chat section 8 am um, 8 atp will be used for the formation of one ammonia clear clear so see here just look at it so here you have the enzyme nitrogenase here it is having the space for the fixing of two uh, for the fixing of nitrogen so substrate is the nitrogen gas so in very first step the reduction will be done so for reduction two h positive will be taken 2h positive will be taken so initially you know that nitrogen and nitrogen three bonds are there then n and n right because we have added two hydrogen so one hydrogen will bind here one another here bind here so first reduction second step is also of reduction again you are adding two hydrogen so now it will be like this so story is not over yet story is not over yet you have to add two more hydrogen and then it will be like and then you need more 2h because because you want to separate this ammonia from this enzyme 
right again you have to add 2h right again you have to add two more hydrogen pair done done so this reaction is important remember one nitrogen eight electron eight h positive 16 atp 8H positive 16 ATP. But here in this particular, here in this particular reaction only 6H are mentioned. So, remember later on one more, um, basically two more H will be added so that this ammonia can get separated from nitrogenase. So, do not get confused. Okay. Do not get confused. Clear? Clear? So, this is important. But this is important. So, oxygen squanzer is your leg hemoglobin. Leg hemoglobin means legume leguminous hemoglobin right oxygen squenzer it is so remember that okay so these microbes they live as aerobes under free living conditions right where nitrogen is not operational but during nitrogen fixation they will become anaerobic means rhizobium when it is living freely it is not fixing the nitrogen right because it is aerobic but when it will start living in that symbiotic association it is anaerobic it will fix the nitrogen important it is now if there if you guys are having any question related to this particular part related to this di diagram let me know because after that we'll start plant growth regulators okay speed is okay speed is fine what do you want me to repeat here n2 to ammonia then 16 ATP if it is N2 if it is 1 ammonia then 8 ATP done how many H plus will be used 8 so if you just look at this reaction 2 plus 2 H at this point plus 2 H at this point plus 2 H at this point but yes another plus 2 H will be added so that this ammonia can get separated from the nitrogen is important it is so do not confuse this part and that reaction right right 8h positive is correct 8 electrons and 8h positive is correct done sure okay so 8 atp for each nh3 produced the energy required is obtained from the respiration of the host cell easy it is now next is the growth rate so up to this part pakka pakka all clear so yeah number of likes and subscribers should be more now It should be more now. And see, we do not like this number 22K, 21K, right? Just make us 25K subscriber family soon. None. Just make us 25K subscriber family soon. And for that, you need to share our channel link with others also. Do share it with your friends. And you know, we are planning something very amazing for the upcoming days. We will practice the questions. We will revise the formulas. We will revise the diagrams. So, we'll cover everything, everything, right? We started late because of many reasons. No doubt we started late. But I think you all have seen that from last 20 days, we are just giving our best. We are just giving our the best. Whatever we can do in that uh, uh, time, now in that remaining time, even in that one week, we are going to do that. Huh, the, pic the color is pinkish, but Okay. See, role of macro and micro is purely theory for Kana. You can read it. I'll make a trick video for that. That how to remember which one is macro, which one is micro. I'll do that. Hmm. Done. Okay. So, biological nitrogen fixation done. Transport in plant done. The next is the plant growth and development growth rates very easy growth rates two things are there arithmetic and the geometric arithmetic and the geometric arithmetic see one cell will divide two cells are there out of that one cell will just grow the another cell will divide so you can can you say that the growth rate is just like constant only one cell will be added again and again when you are talking about the arithmetic right when you are talking about this part isn't it isn't it? You are talking about the growth rates here. So, the increased growth per unit time is the growth rate. Whenever we use the word rate now, we specify it with the time. Right? Growth rate is the word. Growth rate is the word. 
right growth rate is the word so increased growth per unit time is termed as growth rate so the rate of growth can be expressed mathematically right bachche so you see here we have two things here one is arithmetic another is geometric in arithmetic see here one cell is dividing you can see when this when the division when will the division occur let's see there is one cell right ha huh, there is one cell and now it is dividing out of that out of that one part will remain as such and the another cell will divide into two right one cell will remain as is such like let's see this is the diagram one cell will remain like that only another one will divide so one extra will be added and in the next part what will happen see one more will be added so like this like this so you can say that only one one cell will increase like Two, then three, then four, then five, like this. Arithmetic in geometric, it will be from two to four, four to eight, eight to sixteen, sixteen to thirty-two. This is the geometric rate. But here it is two, then three, then four, then five. Is that clear? Is that clear? Now just look at this diagram. When you talk about the division of the zygote, the zygote is a unicellular potent cell. right it is having the capability to develop into a complete individual so initially in the zygote the geometric phase will be there where all the cells are divided but later on later on only some part will have that geometric phase rest will start following the arithmetic phase okay there will be the cell that are going to lose the capacity to divide is that clear bachche is that clear right is that clear so this is important this is important Okay, so what type of question can come in exam? They can ask you that uh, in the root hairs, what type of growth is there? In the zygote, what type of growth is there? So when root here you talk, then arithmetic growth is there. Slowly, slowly growth is occurring, right? Right. So that type of questions will come. Is that clear, ma'am? Please page number. But just open up your NCERT. Just open up your NCERT. Is that clear? Guys, energy should be more in the chat section. Oh, it's first of my. you are not revising the the most important topic plant physiology do it quickly quick 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 yes guys energy should be high energy should be high and by the end of the session the likes should be 1000 plus and we want right we want new subscriber to our channel also especially the need 2024 aspirants need 2025 aspirants after 7th of may now we are going to start the session for the 2024 aspirants right as i said this session is going to be the one of the best session uh, this channel is going to be the best channel one of the best channels for the need preparation and especially for the students that prefer the english language but obviously for that the support is required na that support is should be there we should feel like yeah our students are so good they support us they are so motivated they want our session so we will have that energy to care if someone is waiting for me right they want to study from me so i should go there it's a two way process it is a two way process okay then so this is the one question will come from this growth rate wala part so here bachche it is just the comparison between the growth of living system that can be made in two ways so here you can see the first is the measurement and comparison of total growth per unit time it is the absolute growth rate this question is all th uh, this question can come in your exam this question is important right mcq can come from this particular part whatever lines i am marking as important please read them again and again please read them again and again right right so you can check here right so whenever you talk about the growth rate one is absolute growth rate another is the relative growth rate one is absolute growth rate another is the relative growth rate one is absolute growth rate another is the relative growth rate right bachche so here you can see so measurement and comparison of total growth per unit time like let's say here we are having the two leaves here we are having the two leaves now when you will check that in a particular time in both the leaves how much is the growth rate absolute growth rate now the growth of the given system per unit time expressed on a common basis a uh, ha huh, second is the relative growth rate when you are taking when you are comparing the two when you are individually talking about the growth of one leaf and the another absolute but when you are going to compare the two then it is the relative growth rate then it is the relative growth rate 
right then it is the relative growth rate so here the homework is you will tell me about the absolute and the relative growth rate of these two leaves okay here in the description they have mentioned now the diagrammatic comparison of absolute and the growth uh, relative growth rate both leaves have increased their area by 5 cm in given time to produce a1 and b1 leaves but you have to tell me right you have to tell me about that in both the no doubt in both the leaves in both the leaves growth is 5 cm square right the growth is they have increased their area by 5 cm square but let's say if you are comparing right if you are comparing two leaves so can, can you tell me in which leaf the growth rate is more can you tell me in which leaf the growth rate is more bache manika that is your homework right can you tell me yes anyone in the class anyone in the class quick 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 good what else tell me about the relative na just check it this is your homework you will mention the formula in the chat section okay the next thing okay it's done so next is this particular yes this particular uh, table this particular right uh, rather flow chart which can come in the paper so it is the sequence of developmental pro what is it it is the sequence of development of the developmental process in the plant cell so here you can see which a meristematic cell which is the actively dividing cell the plasmatic growth will be there the increase in the size will be there the cytoplasmic increase will be there right right so you know that there is a cell cell is going to increase its size cell is going to increase its cytoplasmic content the plasmatic growth will be there and after that just look at it again cell division right you know that when a cell will enlarge its size surface to volume ratio will get disrupted nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio will get disturbed so then it is the sign for cell division if you have attended my first session na i have mentioned it clearly there right i have mentioned it clearly there so meristematic cell the plasmatic growth will be there because of that growth the surface to volume ratio will be disturbed the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio will be disturbed so it is indicating that there will be the cell division again there is no need to cram this there is no need to cram it right you just need to focus on the important important things okay you just need to focus on the important important things okay so whenever the growth is there surface to volume ratio will be disturbed the nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio will be disturbed the cell division will occur so this part clear this part clear yes 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 or no tell me very good bachche neelam and then after that obviously expansion of cell elongation will be there and then comes the differentiation so it is the dm we used to say it on instagram and on other apps na dm me dm me dm so firstly differentiation then maturation firstly differentiation then maturation firstly differentiation then maturation so expansion differentiation maturation finally the mature cell which uh, then the aging the senescence will be there and finally the death finally the death so that is how you have to remember meristematic cell plasmatic growth plasmatic growth is going to disrupt surface to volume ratio and nuclear cytoplasmic ratio so there will be the cell division then what is going to happen that cell will elongate after elongation the trick is dm dm differentiation then maturation firstly differentiation then maturation important it is important it is okay important it is done done sure Yes everyone is it clear Guys if it is clear to you do mention it in the chat section be quick be quick be quick quick done Sure yaar energy what about your energy why is too low why it is the final revision for the plant physiology the final revision for plant physiology so just go for it 
okay so what's next plant growth regulator so mention the name of plant growth regulator in the chat section quickly mention the name of plant growth regulators in the chat section so this is the last topic from this chapter plant growth and development then we will talk about the respiration and the photosynthesis after it we are going to discuss respiration and photosynthesis so speed up speed up quick speed up you will see if you are attending this session the most important topics of plant physiology will be covered after this session you just need to practice the questions and even if you practice the previous year questions of for all the chapters now all the chapters trust me you will you will see the difference you will see the difference okay so quickly type the name of the plant growth regulators in the chat section quickly all of you PGRs, plant growth regulators in the chat section. Quick. So the word here is plant growth regulators, something which is going to regulate the growth, right? The word here is regulation. They are not mentioning that whether it is going to increase the growth or decrease the growth, whether it is the inhibitor or it is the promoter. No, no such words are there. Regulator, right? The what is the basic meaning of regulation of the growth? Growth regulation means growth can increase also, growth can decrease also. Whatever is required as per the need. Sometimes we have to stop the growth. Sometimes growth should be there. So that comes under the regulation, right? So we have the PGRs here, which are very small, simple molecules, bache. Small, simple molecules produced in very less quantity, bache. right? Bache. So these plant growth regulators are going to help. So you know the names also, the auxin, the gibberellin, the cytokinin the ethylene, the ethylene and then comes the ABA, abscisic acid. So out of it, right, when you talk about the auxin, gibberellin and the cytokinin, they are the promoters. They are going to promote the growth. They are going to promote the growth. They are the promoters. But when you talk about the ethylene and the ABA, they are the inhibitors right they are the inhibitors and one more important note is here bache, the ethylene it can comes under the promoter as well and inhibitor as well promoter as well inhibitor as well but mainly it is the inhibitor mainly it is the inhibitor right and here it is the ethylene which is the only gaseous plant hormone right it's a gas basically it's a gas basically, it is volatile. It is the one which is responsible for, for the ripening of food. Okay. It is for the one which is responsible for the ripening of food. Right, Bache? So here you can see that your auxin, it is also known as indole 3 acetic acid, the natural auxin. The natural auxin, indole 3 acetic acid. Indole 3 acetic acid, gibberellin is there then. Right, gibberellin is there. There, it is a, it is just like a growth hormone in the case of plants. Like we humans are having the growth hormone, na? it is also like a growth hormone. Right. Then comes the adenine derivatives, adenine derivatives, N6 purpuryl amino purine. We are talking about the cytokinin here. Derivatives of carotenoid, your abscisic acid. Terpenes, your gibberellic acid, and ethylene is the gas. Ethylene is the gas. Right. So auxin. Even auxin formation requires an amino acid. Can you mention the name of that amino acid in the chat section? Can you mention the name of that amino acid in the chat section? Auxin is also made up of, yes, amino acid. Can you name that amino acid in the chat section? One question I am telling you that auxin needs zinc ions. But what about the amino acid? What about the amino acid? Yes, guys, quick. Quick. Exactly. Tryptophan is required. Right? Tryptophan is required. So, this is what you need to mention. So, as I said, PGC, uh, PGRs are broadly divided into two groups. Right, bache? One is going to promote the growth. One is going to inhibit that. So, if something is promoting the growth, means cell division will occur. The enlargement, the elongation will occur. Right, but even the flowering, fruiting and seed formation will occur. Right. So when it comes to the promoter, auxin, gibberellin and cytokinin. And when it comes to the inhibitor, I mentioned the names already. 
क्लियर बच्चे क्लियर सो द डिस्कवरी ऑफ प्लांट ग्रोथ सी यू नीड एन सी आर टी रीडिंग एंड वी आर गोइंग टू रिवाइज इट फ्रॉम द एन सी आर टी मेजरली ओके सो प्लीज बी फोकस्ड हेयर फॉर नेक्स्ट टेन मिनट्स यू नीड टू फोकस एंड देन पी जी आर्ट्स विल बी ओवर देन वी आर लेफ्ट विद रेस्पिरेशन एंड द फोटो सेंथसिस द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स वेर यू पीपल फाइंड डिफिकल्टी सो टेल मी ऑल ऑफ यू इन द चार्ट सेक्शन बी क्विक हाँ जस्ट टेल मी इन द चार्ट सेक्शन डू यू फाइंड दिस रेस्पिरेशन ऑफ फोटो सेंथसिस ईजी और डिफिकल्ट ईजी और डिफिकल्ट and we are going to cater the most important topics only tell me quickly yes quick do you find it easy or difficult the photosynthesis and respiration part because plant growth regulator is very easy easy very good hardeep that's a very good thing है ना सो इन द सेम वे टुडे वी हैव टू रिवाइज द ग्लाइकोलिसिस द क्रैप साइकिल द इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन दैट्स वेरी नाइस मॉडरेट मॉडरेट इज द अप्रोप्रिएट वर्ड आई एल से मॉडरेट इज द अप्रोप्रिएट वर्ड आई एल से नीदर इट इज डिफिकल्ट नॉर इट इज ईजी मॉडरेट इट इज राइट मॉडरेट इट इज बट टुडे आई एल मेक इट ईजी ऑल्सो फाइन लेट्स फोकस यर ना रेस्पिरेशन इज नॉट डिफिकल्ट इन द रेस्पिरेशन देयर इज अ बेसिकली यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्रक्स ऑफ दैट चैप्टर there are certain type of questions that will be repeated again and again you just need to focus there for your need 2023 no plant physiology is easy if you love biochemistry then plant physiology is very easy then literally plant physiology is very easy and plant physiology is a kind of topic if you understood it na then you just need to revise it that's all there is no cramming chemical reactions are there that should be clear in your head that's all okay so we are talking about the growth of plant growth regulator discovery of plant growth regulator the discovery of plant growth regulator is serendipity what is it it is serendipity serendipity means by chance discovery right the scientists were not actually they were not actually finding it out it was just a by chance discovery by chance by chance they got to know about this right so here whenever you get this image you know that what we need to know it is for the oxen it is for the oxen where actually this colutile this colutile will be this tip will be removed right this colutile will be removed and then we have to observe that how things are forming right bachche so the discovery as i said of all the pgrs they are accidental serendipity by chance discovery it is right right it is by chance discovery right so when it comes to the discovery of this oxen charles darwin and his son francis darwin they observed the colutiles of the canary grass right right and they observed that there is the unilateral unilateral means one sided illumination by growing towards the light source phototropism now see how is it possible the phototropism was there how is it possible so obviously the oxen used to form here at the tips right that oxen will go downward like this so obviously growth will be more growth will be here towards this side so it is showing that phototropism it is showing that bending clear it is showing that phototropism it is showing that bending so after a series of experiment it was concluded that it is the colutile which was the site from where you know this bending occur from where some you know some compound was moving down so the question that you need to remember from this part is when it comes to the oxen natural oxen is iaa indol 3 acetic acid for oxen zinc ion is important for its formation tryptophan is the precursor here in the oxen right and it was isolated by f w went right from the oat seedlings avena sativa from the avena it was isolated for the first time so first time it was isolated by went but who observed it first darwin and his son in the canary grass right in the canary grass so can you tell me the botanical name of canary grass in the chat section guys all of you speed up yaar show some energy and whosoever is spamming here please don't do that let them study there are many neat aspirants right they actually want to study this topic please let them study then no need to spam here so guys answer it what is the botanical name of this canary grass what is the botanical name of this canary grass botanical name yes botanical name of canary grass all of you speed up botanical name quick
No, it is not parthenium. Parthenium is the Congress grass. Canary grass, I am saying. Oh, oh, very bad. No, it is not at all parthenium. Parthenium is just the Congress grass. Check it out. Done? So, that is again your homework. Then the Gibralin, my favorite. Gibralin, right? Gibralin discovery was very interesting, right? So, you know that there is a Bacan disease. Bacan means foolish. Bacan means foolish. It disease of rice seedling. Actually, rice seedlings were growing too much. Their height, huh, their uh, height was too much. And uh, what was happening? Because they were not growing properly. Like only height was increasing. But otherwise, the plant was Right, the plant was not uh, uh, the plant was not healthy basically. Right, the plant was not healthy basically. Only the height was increasing. That's all. That's all. And after that, plant was you can say that plant fall down or something like that to the rice seedling. Right, bache. So what is the point here? The bacan, the foolish seedling disease of the rice seedling. It was caused by a fungal pathogen that is Gibrella fusicola. Right, Gibrella fusicola. Right. So, Gibrella fusicori is a fungus which used to cause the bacane, disease, bacane diseases to the rice seedling. Because of that, rice, seedling were, uh, rice seedlings were increasing their height. Right. And after that, they were, not, they, uh, they were not making the healthy plant, but they were just dying. Okay. They were just dying. Just a minute, guys. Just a minute. Okay. Done. Eight minutes. Okay, done. So, Kurosawa, he reported that it is because of some chemical, fungus is releasing a particular chemical and which is responsible for this growth, right, when it was later isolated. So, which chemical was there? Gibralic acid. Now, at that time, so you know, more than 100 gibralic acids are there. So, it was gibralic acid. What was it? It was gibralic acid. Terpenes they are basically. Terpenes they are basically. Then, when you talk about the discovery of what? When you talk about the cytokinin this discovery was very interesting but cytokinin the word is cytokinin it is related to cell division right it is the plant hormone which can do which used to do the excess of cell division cytokinin its discovery was very interesting you know like some uh, scientists they were doing the tissue culturing right they were doing the tissue culturing they were making the callus but the growth was not occurring properly the cell mass was forming but further growth was not there like that root and stem and all so one day a scientist was frustrated and you know in the lab some old bottles were there in that uh, in that bottle the dna the very old DNA or you can say that degraded DNA was present. They just put that DNA in that culture, right? Out of frustration, sometimes we used to do things like that, isn't it? Isn't it out of frustration we used to do some things like that? Na, sir? So, some study, some scientists, they were doing the tissue culturing. So, they were not able to figure out that callus formation was there, but further growth was not there. So, he was frustrated. So, he put uh, in that lab, a bottle was there. In that bottle, the DNA, very old DNA was there. Okay, and that DNA was degraded. So, he just placed it there. He just put it like that. Right, and he saw key growth is there. The growth is there. Are you getting my point? And later on, even that scientist tried with the fresh DNA. It, it didn't happen. So, so, then he concluded that because that uh, bottle was very old, because that DNA was very old, maybe that DNA was degraded. And then he got to know. So, whenever you talk about the cytokinin, see, Skoog and his co-worker, they observed that from the internodal segments of the tobacco stem, the callus proliferated only. In addition to auxins, the nutrient medium was supplemented with one of the following. Extracts of vascular tissue, yeast extract, coconut milk or the DNA. So, Miller et al., Miller and his friends basically they identified that it is the crystallized the cytokine uh, they crystallized the cytokinesis promoting active substance which is termed as kinetin which is termed as kinetin so this discovery was very interesting right cytokinin discovery okay the cytokinin discovery then bachi ethylene so during mid 1960 three independent researcher they reported Achha, haan, this is epsisic acid. This is not for the ethylene. This is for the epsisic acid. So, during mid 1960, three independent researchers, they reported the purification and chemical characterization of three different kinds of inhibitor. So, here we are talking about the ABA that is epsisic acid and it is the stress hormone in the case of plants. 
it is the anti transpirant in the case of plants stress hormone stress hormone in the case of plants so gibberellic acid and aba they are antagonist they function in the opposite way like gibberellin uh, gibberellic acid it is going to promote the growth aba is going to stop that because at that time conditions are not favorable so whenever there is water stress or any other stress is there at the time aba will release aba will form and it will make sure that metabolism should be slower right bachche metabolism should be slower and plant should survive in that adverse condition that is why we used to call it as stress hormone clear bachche right so three scientists they independently individually they find it uh, they they found these inhibitor inhibitor b abscission 2 and domin and later on when you know they checked the chemical composition it was all same and it was named at abscisic acid so discovery is important they can ask you when for the first time right where uh, where gibberellin was found for the first time so question like that can come in the neat examination so this is what you people need to focus and uh, ethylene it is for the cousins hh cousins they confirmed that volatile substance is released from the ripened oranges and that is speeding up the growth of the unripened bananas that's all okay that's all is that clear is that clear and when you talk about the ethylene one point that you need to remember is triple response right whenever we talk about the ethylene just remember one thing triple response triple response right can you tell me what is it this triple response is just like the bio assay of the ethylene right triple response three things are going to occur right if we want to check that ethylene presence let's say a seedling is growing some hurdle is there so what is going to happen the instead of you know this uh, horizontal growth ha huh, in sorry instead of the uh, instead of this vertical growth horizontally the stem will grow it will become thick and then there is a formation of this apical hook right apical hook horizontal growth thick stem apical hook formation triple response these three things will occur but you revise there is no need to spam we will keep the assertion and reason session also please do not spam here okay okay so this is about the ethylene this is about the ethylene so now when it comes to the oxen bachche what type of question can come obviously on the basis of their function so the very important function that you need to remember is the apical dominance what is it it is the apical dominance this is what you need to keep in your head you can talk about any of the hormone they all are having you know one specific function that you people need to remember so in the case of oxen it is the apical dominance and moreover oxen is the only plant hormone which is polar it shows the polar transport it shows the polar transport right right from stem tip to the towards the root root from root tip towards the stem like this polar transport is there so oxen first time it was isolated from human urine bachche so oxen is for indol 3 acetic acid that is iaa which is also a natural oxen so your homework is to find out the name of synthetic oxen that is your homework important it is synthetic oxen that is your homework if you know the name of synthetic oxen type it in the chat section quickly type it in the chat section if you know the name of the synthetic oxens quick be quick done bachche done so here you can see so they are generally produced by the growing apices of stem and root whether it is the stem tip or it is the shoot tip the oxen will form right the oxen will form and then they will migrate so as i said iaa iba natural plant hormone so you can write it down in your notes bachche iaa i iaa iba these are the these are the natural oxens indol 3 acetic acid indol butyric acid natural oxens they are important it is okay important it is then comes bachche na naphthalene acetic acid 2,4 d 2,4 dichlorophenoxy acetic acid both of them are synthetic oxen so this question is important natural oxen and synthetic oxen natural oxen and synthetic oxen and moreover bachche this 2,4 d is also a vd side it used to destroy dicot weeds this 2,4 d is also vd side it used to destroy the dicot weeds right so di chloro phenoxy acetic acid moreover even t4 t is also there but that is not mentioned in ncrt so we are not considering it done bachche so you know that it will help to initiate rooting in stem cuttings okay rooting in stem cuttings so that is why it is used in the tissue culturing even it promotes flowering in 
pineapple in pineapple right and it will prevent the fruit and leaf drop at early stages so it is my advice that you should mention the name of these right the the function of these hormones on your uh, in your any of uh, basically make the short notes right even in ncert if you want to mention it you can even if you want to write the function of these hormones on a separate paper you should you should and you should revise it again and again okay you should revise it again and again so when it comes to the auxin polar transport is there formed at the shoot apices right the example of natural and the synthetic auxin and its function so the very first function is as i said rooting and the stem cuttings then bachche fine uh, pineapple flowering right bachche and then it will prevent the fruit and leaf drop which is very easy because it promotes the but but it promotes the absorption of the older mature leaves and the fruits actually what happened now when it comes to auxin we know that it is the growth regulator right uh, it is a growth promoter basically so whenever in the paper we get the option that auxin is going to promote the absorption we don't believe that absorption you know na a kind of layer will form because of that leaf or the fruit drop will occur but auxin is going to do that but in the case of what in the case of older mature leaves and fruit you cannot say that ki auxin is not playing any role in the formation of absorption layer a layer which will form by which you know the further leaf and the fruit drop will occur because it is a very older leaf or fruit okay okay and why is it important because when that older leaf and fruit it will fall down then that particular nutrient the mobilized one will move to the new growing part that is why right that is why are you getting my point so remember that whenever we talk about the older right whenever we talk about the older leaves and fruits then definitely definitely auxin is going to do that absorption formation auxin will promote the formation of the absorption layer is that clear bachche is that clear then again the most important function as i said is the apical dominance what is it it is the apical dominance so auxin because it forms here at the root tips so whenever that root tip is there na the lateral buds will not grow okay the lateral buds will not grow because here the auxin formation is there the lateral buds will not grow this is known as the apical dominance right this is known as the apical dominance but bachche but cytokinin can inhibit right if we apply cytokinin right in that case lateral uh, buds can grow lateral buds can grow it is like a counter action of the apical dominance the cytokinin so what we have to uh, do if we want these lateral buds to grow we have to remove its tip we have to decapitate it then the lateral buds will grow right then the lateral buds will grow this is the one way the first way is we have to remove the tip and then what will happen the lateral buds will grow we have to decapitate this particular plant okay the another way is we can even apply the cytokinin so cytokinin if we apply cytokinin then in such case also the lateral buds will grow in such case also the lateral buds will grow so this is important do mark it okay this is important so that's all so you can see here that removal of shoot tips that is decapitation usually result in the growth of lateral buds right so it is used in tea plantation hedge making okay it is used there so that type of question used to come in neat exam in today's session also after all that important topics na i have added few uh, nc a uh, few neat pyqs so in that pyqs also you will find it okay you will find it done bachche so this is about the auxin and it also promote the parthenocarpy only in the tomatoes about the 24d dichlorophenoxy acetic acid i told you already so it is going to destroy the dicot weeds that's all so auxin also controls xylem differentiation and helps in the cell division okay so if there is any part if there is any doubt do let me know guys do you have any doubt do you have any doubt 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 sure yes bachche do you have any doubt here yes or no quickly tell me in the chat section quickly we are about to finish it we are about to finish it right and after this the respiration and photosynthesis the important important part the important important questions we are going to discuss okay sure sure then who is going to like the video who is going to subscribe our channel if you are new to our channel do subscribe it do subscribe it 
but the kartikeyan like in the in the parks and all you used to see na that some plants they are used at uh, they are used as fences right actually they are not fences they are basically the hedge we'll talk about that too afreen okay okay no 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 we don't need break it is the session is just for 3 hours i don't think that you need the break lunch break seriously you can have your lunch you can have your lunch synthetic oxygen is your naa and aa your 24d okay let's finish it now then you will have a break and then share sir session will be there okay so next is the gibberellin next is what next is gibberellin so gibberellin is a uh, it is pgr and you know that when it comes to the gibberellin it g for gibberellin g for growth hormone this is how i remember it is a kind of growth hormone in the case of plants okay bachche so there are more than 100 gibberellin reported from you know different different organism from the fungi also from the higher plants also right so what we have to see in the case of gibberellin the most important function is the bolting remember bolting bolting right so gibberellin gibberellic acid it is it is it it is acidic bachche it is acidic bachche so their ability to cause an increase in the length of axis is used to increase the length of grape stalks actually it is related to this bolting part you know that there are some plants which are in the rosette state which are in the rosette a uh, rosette stage right they are having the rosette habitat what is the meaning of it like see we have the nodes here right from these nodes leaves are growing there is another node means when when internodal length internodal length is less so from that nodes the leaves are going to arise so it looks like the rosette right the rosette so bolting is what when we when we uh, use that gibberellin it helps in the increase in the length of internodes it increases the length of internodes okay so bolting for bolting it is used the gibberellin very important it is clear bachche so it increases the length of that internodes this is what you need to remember and you know that in the case of fruits like apple it helps in improving its shape so i remember it in this way g for gibberellin g for growth and g for gem g for gem hai na so it is just like a, it is acting like a gem for apple because it helps in the it helps in having a better shape of apple okay so that is how i remember it it improves the shape of the apple so obviously it is a growth hormone it is going to delay the senescence right it is going to delay that aging so fruits that can be left on the tree longer because of this gibberellin right bachche and it even speed up the malting process in the brewing industry so that is what you need to remember okay so as i said internode length will be increased uh, whenever we apply the gibberellin so here you can see the example for that that sugar cane stores carbohydrate in their stems so whenever to the sugar cane crop we spray the gibberellin the length increases so length increases means more sugar content okay the yield will be more done bachche so even it speeds up hasen means speeds up the gibberellin uh, the juvenile conifers okay the maturity period will increase seed production will be early done and about the bolting i told you already that's all that's all done bachche so gibberellin is the antagonist of aba gibberellin and anta, uh, aba they both are having opposite functions they both are having opposite functions right bachche so cytokinin it is related to the cell division it is related to the cell division so it is n6 six purpuryl amino purin what is it it is n6 purpuryl amino purin purpuryl amino purin so cytokinins it is having effect on cytokinesis on the cell division okay so it was discovered as kinetin which is a modified form of adenine which is a modified form of purine right bachche right bachche so it was uh, discovered as kinetin from the autoclaved herring sperm dna herring sperm is a herring is a fish so fish sperm dna it was isolated right but kinetin is not the naturally occurring it is not naturally occurring in plants in plants it is zeatin remember obtained from z maize in plants it is zeatin zeatin it is zeatin okay okay so natural substances with cytokinin like activity it was uh, led to the isolation of zeatin 
from corn kernels and coconut milk. This is what you need to remember. So, kinetin is isolated from the herring sperm, but when it is the zeatin, it is from the plants. It is from the plants. Is that clear? It is from the plants. Is that clear? So, it will promote the cell division, the cell elongation. Okay, but so cell division will be increased. So, again, root apices, developing shoot buds, young fruits, they all are having the cytokinin. Okay, so new leaves, chloroplast, lateral shoot growth, adventitious shoot, everything will be formed by that. And I told you, it helps in overcoming the apical dominance, important it is. And nutrient, nutrient mobilization will be promoted. So, senescence will be delayed because of this cytokinin. So, in the case of cytokinin, there is one word, na? Richmond Lang effect, right? Right? Remember this, cytokinin. Cytokinin causes Richmond-Lang effect. Write it in the chart section. Cytokinin, right? Cytokinin. Cytokinin is having this Richmond-Lang effect. And what is this rich? What is this Richmond-Lang effect? It is basically, bache, the delay of senescence. Delay of senescence is also known as Richmond-Lang effect. So it is done by cytokinin. It is done by cytokinin. Clear? It is done by cytokinin. Clear? Delay of senescence means Richmond Lang effect. So, it is done by cytokinin. This is what you need to remember. So, natural, uh, the cytokinin which is obtained from plant is, tell me in the chat section, the cytokinin which is obtained from plant is, see we are about to finish it, bache, and then we will start the most awaited chapter, the respiration and the photosynthesis. So, please be focused here. Huh? Tell me quickly. The naturally occurring, uh, the cytokinin which is obtained from plant is zeatin from Z maize from coconut milk. Okay, it is uh, a kind of um, uh, adenine, purine basically. Done? Done? So, it helps in that cell division, cell elongation. Okay. So, next is the ethylene, which is a gas used for the fruit ripening. Very important it is. Right, bache. So, uh, it is synthesized in large amount by tissue undergoing senescence and the ripening fruits. Right, bache. So, as I said, triple response is the bioassay of this ethylene. So, what will happen there? Horizontal growth of the seedling, swelling of the stem axis. It will become thick. Apical hook formation in the dicot seedling. This is important. So, this is known as triple response in the case of Ethylene. So, triple response is shown by ethylene. Triple response is shown by ethylene. Okay, triple response is shown by ethylene. This is what you need to remember. So, it promotes senescence, abscission of plants, right, bache, and uh, highly effective in fruit ripening. It enhances the respiration rate during the ripening of fruit. Okay, it will increase the respiration rate. Done. So, it even breaks the seed and bud dormancy, bache, initiate dermi germination in peanut seeds, sprouting of potato tuber is also done by the ethylene. Done. So, in the case of uh, deep water rice plants, the growth of internode will be done by this ethylene. Uh, that is the important thing that you need to remember from this ethylene part. Okay. Okay. So, one more important part is there from ethylene as it is used to initiate flowering and for synchronizing fruit set in pineapples. So, in pineapples, it is going to promote the flowering. Even we discussed the same in the case of oxygen also. Na? So, mention it in your short notes. You should make the short notes. Okay. Okay. So, flowering in mango is also uh, induced by this ethylene. So, it is regulating many physiological processes. So, it is very much used in the agriculture. Done, bache. So, from ethyphen, Basically, ethyphen is the source of ethylene. It is also a PYQ. So, ethyphen is also the source of ethylene. It is a PYQ. So, it is an aqueous solution which is readily absorbed and transported within the plant and releases ethylene slowly. Ethyphen. This is the PYQ that you need to remember. That's all. Okay. So, next is the ABA. As I said, it is the stress hormone. So, whenever plant is under any stress, right? So, ABA will be released. It will make sure uh, to slow down the metabolism so that plant can survive for a longer time. Let's say now what a stress is there, right? So, plant will do this abscisic acid will do what? Abscisic acid will close the stomata, right? It will close the stomata so that water loss should not be there. Water loss should not be there. 
in the form of vapor so this is the role of the sepsis against it right which is so it is the inhibitor plant growth inhibitor it is okay so it inhibits the seed germination it stimulates the closure of stomata it increases the tolerance of plant to such stress so it is a good hormone whenever plant is under stress it is like i will i am there to help you out you need to survive here you need to survive here like we teachers we help you out in such tough situations that don't worry if you are running out of time uh, if you are running out of time these are the topics that you people need to revise same way so epsisic acid is like don't worry right i'll help you to survive in such stressful conditions okay so it ha uh, huh, in the maturation and dormancy it is playing the role so it helps the seed to withstand the desiccation and another factors which are unfavorable for growth so whenever the seed is not getting the favorable condition at that time abscisic acid is present it is released right it will tell that seed now the conditions are not favorable in your surrounding no need to germinate otherwise you will die that is the point right that is the point Now, bache, so this is all about the PGRs. This is all about the plant growth regulator. So the next topic that we need to study is the abscess. Uh, it is the respiration in plants, and then we will move to the photosynthesis. But yes, for that, show some energy, guys. Show some energy. The number of likes should be more than thousand. We are about to finish it. I told you nine, three hours. I am going to finish it. So see, I think you all are okay with the speed, isn't it? Isn't it? Huh? tell me are you are you okay with the speed i think you all are ha huh? uh oh just a minute see someone is here you have to guess someone is here you have to guess you need break seriously seriously I just started the class at eleven thirty. Just two hours, yar. Who's here? Karthik, at least mention sir or ma'am. So, aha, Anika is right. Anika is right. Yeah, but very Aha, good. Aha, they were expecting Wasim sir. <laughs> Wasim sir is not here. We have the cap too. Yo, what's up, ma'am? How is it going? Looks like you are <laughs> See, in respiration. Very good, very good. <laughs> yeah. I know this. Energy from the sun comes. Plants give us oxygen, and they also give us sugar. But and that is the photosynthesis. Yeah, yeah. It is not the respiration. So is this slide wrong? No slide is fine. Because, see, in the respiration, what is happening? Ultimately, the energy will be released. So, and ultimately, the energy will be released. The carbon dioxide. Uh, ultimately, the energy will be released. So, ultimately, oxygen will be released. Oh, 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 oh. great, great, great! Something crazy is happening over here. But, 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 but here in the respiration, when plants are respiring, like when we respire, oxygen will not be. CO two will be released. See, I need break. So, I if I break. sleep under a plant or a tree, I will die. uh it's not like that you will die but it is advised that you should not sleep because during night time only during night time only at that time plants are not doing the photosynthesis they are doing respiration because they want energy for themselves so at that time they are not releasing oxygen they are releasing carbon dioxide so in the respiration oh. they are breaking down glucose because they want to release the co2 yeah i had one doubt ha huh? i have seen couples and lovers talking to each other and they say that you know your carbon dioxide is my oxygen Is that possible biologically? <laughs> <laughs> How can this happen? Their carbon dioxide is their oxygen. Yes, possible. Kya? I don't know. Love tell me, tell everyone. This. Tell me. <laughs> okay. Oh, somebody is by my name only. Shreya says, "Very nice." Bala Murgan. Hello, hello, Sakshi. Hello, Chairu Kuri. Very good. Not possible. Okay, Anika says not possible. Ha, Ani, Ani, Anika is a biology student. She is like, sir, we do not believe in that. Okay. For us, it is very bad. You know, we are the biology student. See, no one can tell us that. Oh my God, you are my heart. You are my this and that. Because we know that heart is just a hollow muscular organ. We cannot be someone's heart. You're taking the romance out of a relationship, ma'am. Oh, please, we do not want that. We are biology students. Oh my God! Okay. Now I can say that you, by looking at you, my heartbeat increases. I feel that adrenaline rush and all, but it is not like that, isn't it, guys? Isn't it? Right. No one can fool us if we are the biology student. 
इफ एनी बॉय विल कम टू मी एंड विल बी लाइक यू आर माई हार्ट बीट आई कैन नॉट बिकॉज हार्ट बीट विल बी प्रोड्यूस वेन देर इज द क्लोजर ऑफ ए वी वेल्स वेन देर इज द क्लोजर ऑफ सेमी लूनर वेल्स इज इंट इट Oh my God! There is no chemistry only in biology. I feel <laughs> <laughs> all these things are stupid. You know what? <laughs> okay, okay. So, guys, you continue studying biology because the uh, obviously it is the most high weightage important subject for your. Sir, but exam. these students are really bad. Yeah. Uh, you know they requested the plant physiology session and now they are drained. No, we don't want to study it. Some of them. Of hey, course. Don't listen. They, Chumma, they will say that. Just tell them that you have to study. Give one tight slap. That's all. <laughs> Virtual slap. One tight slap. Or else come here and I'll give you slap. Ha, love hormone is the C yeah. oxytocin. Do you know that there is a hormone for love also? Bonding hormone. Because of that, we bond with each other. Oh, crazy! So everything is all uh, chemical. It's biology. It's biology. chemical biology. See, biology and chemistry they cannot survive without each other. Same thing people say about chemistry and physics also. Same Mother thing chemi- people say about physics and maths. So if maths is related to physics, physics is related to chemistry, chemistry is related to bio, bio is related to maths. So means everything is related. Long distance related. relationship. <laughs> <laughs> It is like that. Okay. Ah ha ha! If you are algae, then I am the fungi. Ha! Oh my! That gosh. is acceptable. Symbiotic relationship that is acceptable, literally that is. Oh my God, crazy! Okay, okay you guys keep studying, guys. I'll see you guys at four o'clock. All right, for ray optics and wave optics concepts, problems, concepts, problems. All right, that's it. See, see I guys. I know one thing from ray optics and I just very know. Very good, very good. What I, is that? It is a lens. You know. Which lens? It is convex lens. And what is that? How is that ray going straight like this? I'll tell you. It will be like this. And and what? <laughs> and what is the? See, it is a here? conversion. Oh, sorry. It is a uh, convex lens, ma. Ha. Huh. It will converge. Sure. Ha. Hundred percent. Ha. Sure. Huh. <laughs> this is how you confuse students. <laughs> you just ask, are you sure? That's it. Ha. <laughs> ha. Huh. Huh. I'm sure. Now tell But me. But this is correct. This is correct, correct. now. I'm smart. Four see, four marks. <laughs> see, we can answer. I can answer physics question. He can answer biology question. But your Vasim sir, he's not even able to answer physics question and biology question. Tell him. <laughs> Tell him. Hey guys, nine seventy six likes. Come on, make it go up by twenty five. Yeah, at least one thousand one likes I want. Come on, make this go up by one k. Then only I will go. Like today they are not listening to me. You try, no. please. <laughs> yeah, only then I will go. Then ma'am will continue for bio. Yes. Yes. Come on, come on, make it go up, make it go up, make it go up to one k. Yes, let's make. Oh, seventy eight. Yeah, let's push oh, yeah, this. Let's push number. this. Let's push this. Seventy nine, eighty, eighty one, eighty two, eighty three. Very good. Very good. Vadim sir will also come someday. Don't worry. And guys, uh, tomorrow there will be you know the most predicted physics paper. By mistake, it is written chemistry. Students are like, <laughs> sir, you are going to teach chemistry. Hey, <laughs> Baba. You what should. Are you you should. You should. Coach <laughs> me. <laughs> so I'll be teaching you physics tomorrow. The most predicted questions, and then Bam is also going to conduct some. Oh, it's one k. No, it's yeah. Yes, yeah. Very good. Very good. Ah, pehle aa jaate. Yeah. Now he'll come for two k. Okay. Done. Okay, guys. Bye. Okay, okay. so guys, let's start the respiration. Respiration in plants, है ना? Important, interesting, simple, lovely, whatever you want to say. Wow. अच्छा, two k for four pm session. That's good. But what about this plant physiology? Bye. So captain is like bye bye hi hi. But see, he is able to answer few questions, isn't it? He is able to answer few questions, even from biology. I think you all have seen his that how to guess wala video. He's good in it. He's quite good in it. When is the mock test? Soon, soon, soon there will be the mock test. But now let's not waste the time. Let's talk about the respiration. So tell me what exactly is the respiration? Shreya sir is having a valid point. Although he was talking about the couples and all, do not listen to them. We are the biology student, है ना? We know the logic behind. We cannot be the heartbeat of someone. We cannot be the heart of someone. Because heart is just a pumping organ, and we cannot even give our heart to someone, right? We need it, boy. We need it. We need it. है ना अच्छा you guys are hungry, guys. Just one hour. Otherwise, we'll break the flow. See, if I'll give you fifteen minutes ka break, then I'll continue. Then five to ten minutes will be wasted, and then you know again it will take more time. Let's finish it till three. What do you say? Let's finish it till three. 
प्रिंस दैट इंट्यूशन शुड बी स्ट्रॉन्ग ना वॉट से शो सम एनर्जी आर शो सम एनर्जी जस्ट जस्ट लेट्स फिनिश दिस रिमेनिंग पार्ट टिल थ्री वॉट से आई टोल्ड यू दैट इन थ्री आर्स आई एम गोइंग टू फिनिश इट सो इलेवन थर्टी टू हाँ टिल थ्री लेट्स फिनिश इट सो यू कैन हैव योर फूड हु स्टॉपिंग यू जा ओके डन लेट्स स्टार्ट सो द वर्ड इज रेस्पेरेशन द वर्ड इज रेस्पीरेशन इन प्लांट्स इट्स अ जनरल थिंग यू नो इट अल्टीमेटली इन रेस्पीरेशन वॉट इज गोइंग टू हैपन वी आर गोइंग टू ब्रेक दिस ग्लूकोज वाई बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट एनर्जी राइट ग्लूकोज विल बी ऑक्सीडाइज वाई बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट एनर्जी ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन विल बी यूज टू ऑक्सीडाइज दिस ग्लूकोज वाई बिकॉज वी वॉन्ट टू रिलीज द एनर्जी प्लांट्स आर गोइंग टू डू द सेम थिंग right no doubt plants they uh, during photosynthesis they take up the co2 they take up the water and then they release the oxygen but during night time because even they want energy right at that time they are going to break that glucose they are going to use that uh, glucose to re uh, release the energy that they can use for their metabolism this is what we study when we talk about the respiration right bachche when we talk about what when we talk about the respiration so now what what is the thing that you people need to remember when we talk about the respiration simple it is first of all the very first step of respiration is the your glucose which is a six carbon containing compound that glucose which is a six carbon containing compound we are going to break it into two pyruvic acid or two pyruvate i'll be very quick in this part okay two pyruvate or two pyruvic acid will be formed from this glucose it is a first step it is the common step and we used to call it as glycolysis we used to call it as glycolysis so conversion of glucose to two pyruvate now see glucose six carbon containing compound it will form three 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 carbon containing compounds two three carbon containing compound it is simple mathematics right it is simple mathematics so here as i said we have the glycolysis the very first step of this very first step of this respiration and it is common do you know that it is common to both it is common to both to aerobic respiration as well and to the anaerobic respiration right it is common to both to aerobic and to anaerobic respiration right anaerobic respiration so what we have to remember here in the case of uh, glycolysis that it is oxygen independent it does not require oxygen secondly the site is cytoplasm the site where this process will occur is cytoplasm is that clear everyone glucose to pyruvate will form it is the glycolysis the common step of the respiration even for the aerobic bacteria even for the aerobic organism even for the anaerobic uh, organism it is a oxygen independent process and here the site for occurrence of this glycolysis is the cytoplasm now there are two fates either this pyruvate either this pyruvate can go for aerobic respiration aerobic you know that when oxygen is available or it can go for it can go for oh oh right it can even go for the anaerobic anaerobic respiration where oxygen is absent so bachche if this pyruvate is entering in the aerobic respiration then we will be talking about the krab cycle you know about it tricarboxylic acid cycle i have already given you the trick for it right bachche and the second important thing is the electron transport chain what is it it is a etc electron transport chain even we can call it as electron transport system but when it is the anaerobic then what do we have we have the fermentation right so if it is the anaerobic respiration ahead na then fermentation will occur and fermentation will not release more energy in the aerobic respiration we get more energy in the fermentation less energy will be taken out from the glucose very less energy will be taken out from the glucose so in the fermentation two things are there bachche the first is the alcoholic fermentation in the case of yeast we used to study that alcoholic fermentation where ethanol and co2 will come out where ethanol right ethanol ethyl alcohol and carbon dioxide will come out and the another is what another is the lactic acid fermentation which takes place in the muscle cells of the animals the lactic acid will form the fatigue will occur in muscles because of that right 
बिकॉज ऑफ दैट सो दिस इज द कंप्लीट फ्लो चार्ट बच्चे दिस इज द कंप्लीट फ्लो चार्ट ओके ओके सो नाउ कम टू द ग्लाइकोलिस डू नॉट गेट स्केर्ड बाई लुकिंग एट दिस पर्टिकुलर फ्लो चार्ट जस्ट आई विल टेल यू थ्री टू फोर पॉइंट फ्रॉम वेयर द क्वेश्चन इज गोइंग टू कम इन द पेपर राइट थ्री टू फोर पॉइंट फेयर क्वेश्चन इज गोइंग टू कम फ्रॉम द पेपर थ्री बच्चे फ्रॉम द वर्ड इट इज इट सेल्फ क्लियर दैट इट इज द ग्लाइकोलिस मीन्स ब्रेक डाउन ऑफ ग्लूकोज राइट it is the breakdown of glucose right so in this particular from this particular topic the type of question that they can ask is how many and this is what you need to solve only atps are formed in glycolysis there are steps third is where do the substrate level phosphorylation phosphorylation occurs in glycolysis so that type of questions they can ask you they can ask you how many atps are formed they can ask you about the steps they can ask you where the substrate level phosphorylation will occur because the rest everything is easy site is cytoplasm oxygen independent right bachche that type of questions can come in the paper so when you talk about the glycolysis it's a 10 step process 10 steps are there basically and whenever you talk about the respiration it is catabolic ब्रेक डाउन इज देयर रेस्पिरेशन इज अ मल्टी स्टेप प्रोसेस फॉर एवरी स्टेप एनर्जी इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर एवरी स्टेप एनर्जी इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर एवरी स्टेप एनर्जी इज रिक्वायर्ड ओके ओके सो टेन स्टेप प्रोसेस इट इज इन द फाइव स्टेप्स इट इज द प्रिपरेटरी फेज राइट एंड फाइव स्टेप्स इट इज द पे ऑफ फेज वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस मैम प्रिपरेटरी एंड पे ऑफ प्रिपरेटरी एंड पे ऑफ बच्चे इन द इनिशियल स्टेप्स इवन एनर्जी फ्रॉम ए टी पी विल बी यूज एंड इन द लास्ट स्टेप्स एनर्जी विल बी गिवन आउट नॉट जस्ट द ए टी पी इवन एन ए डी एच टू ऑल्सो फॉर्म फ्रॉम दिस ग्लाइकोलिस इवन एन ए डी एच टू ऑल्सो फॉर्म फ्रॉम दिस ग्लाइकोलिस राइट बच्चे सो आई रिलेट हाँ आई लास्क वन क्वेश्चन यू नो वेन एवर वी गेट हॉस्पिटलाइज you know whenever we get hospitalized doctors and we are running out of energy we are low doctors used to give us the right doctors uh, used to give us the glucose you know about it isn't it you know about it yes everyone tell me see the number of likes should be more than 1k even ha na it should be more than 1k if you are new to our channel you should do it ha na matlab whenever we go to the hospital we are uh, we are low we do not have the energy doctors used to give us the glucose right that solution basically the saline basically right other things are also there glucose is also there right because glucose and nacl both of them are required for glucose movement now that is why it is the saline so my point here is why am i asking this question i was just asking you the 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 the, the glycolysis then why suddenly i started asking this so glucose to you know the first step of glycolysis see in this way you will never ever forget this first step in this way you people will never ever forget this first step the first step is the irreversible step irreversible irreversible means it is only taking place in the one direction generally in the glycolysis you will see the arrow like that that forward and backward direction is uh, reaction is there but here when you talk about the first step and other steps are also there i will not go in that depth because we are running out of time so from glucose to glucose 6 phosphate when it forms this step is irreversible and in this step you know that the atp will be used atp will form adp and obviously enzyme is used let's say it is the hexokinase hexokinase and magnesium ion is used here for all the enzymes of glycolysis magnesium is required for all the enzymes of glycolysis magnesium is required now my question was that whenever we go to the hospital right doctor used to give us the glucose right and that glucose will be used to release the energy that glucose will be used to release the energy isn't it isn't it but my question here is see that glucose when it will be converted to glucose 6 phosphate even we are going to use the atp we are going to use the atp atp will form adp we are going to use the atp atp will form adp so why can't doctor can why doctor cannot just give us glucose 6 phosphate it is going to save our atp it is going to save our energy tell me tell me why can't in that solution we can directly take glucose 6 phosphate why why 
why is it so why glucose uh, why doctor is uh, giving us glucose why in that saline glucose is there why can't they just give us glucose 6 phosphate because whenever our body will take glucose it will convert it into g6p and it is going to take the energy why because bachche see this is the key this glucose it will enter within a cell here it needs to form g6p why because it is a locking step in this way see you will never ever forget it it's a locking step it's a locking step we have to lock the glucose within we have to lock the glucose within right right otherwise if it will remain like glucose only then it can again cross the plasma membrane it can come out so this very first step here in this glycolysis is the locking step here we need to form g6p because this g6p is impermeable to the cell membrane it cannot come out it cannot come out so that is why doctors cannot directly give us g6p okay okay they have to give us glucose and this step will be taken here so that g6p will get locked here so next steps are very easy here very 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 easy from glucose again it's isomer fructose 6 phosphate will form again one more irreversible step right which will form fructose 1 6 bis phosphate now the another point that i will share here is see another point there are two words one is di another is bis can you tell me the difference in these two there are two words one is di another is bis can you tell me the difference in these two can you tell me the difference in these two and now i am running out of water see when in a compound to two different different carbons the same group is attached then you will use the word di but if in the same compound to the same carbon this phosphate is attached then it is the bis so here we have to use the word fructose 16 oh my bad okay i mentioned it in a in an op opposite way actually yes so whenever whenever to the same carbon same group is attached then it is di in a compound na when to same carbon same group is attached then it is di but if it is attached to the different 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 carbon then it is going to be the bis then it is going to be the bis okay so here fructose 16 bis phosphate means to the first carbon to the sixth carbon phosphate is attached to the first carbon to the uh, sixth carbon phosphate is attached done bachche done bachche so this is the key so the steps that you need to focus because uh, we need to focus on the important things only so here you can see i told you about the first step second third and even the fourth so for every step enzyme is required so you need to remember here in which steps the atp is used atp is used right where there is the dephosphorylation right so here you can see the first step irreversible one the third step irreversible one here also atp is used so glucose to glucose 6 phosphate because we need atp so atp A, atp will be used here it will form adp from fructose 6 phosphate to fructose 16 bis phosphate again the atp will be used then triose phosphate uh, all that things will occur now the another confusion is here at this particular step right students get confused here now bachche what is happening we have fructose 16 bis phosphate a three carbon containing compound now we are going to break it into triose phosphate one is the glyceraldehyde three phosphate which is an aldehyde bachche one is g3p glyceraldehyde three phosphate another is dry hydroxy acetone three phosphate one is the aldehyde form another is the ketone form one is the aldehyde form another is the ketone form and even they are in this they are having this thing right they can get converted into each other right they they can get converted into each other i i am telling something important listen to me actually here in the glycolysis right we we are not going to use dihydroxy acetone 3 phosphate we will not use this ketose it's a ketose right it's a ketose it is having the ketone group and it is an aldose it is having the aldehyde 
Its functional group is aldehyde. Its functional group is ketones. What you people need to remember here, you just need to remember here the equilibrium is more towards this side. So ultimately, your DHAP will be converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. What you need to remember here that here at this step, your DHAP will be converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Your DHAP will be converted to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So can I not not say that that after this we will be having Two glyceraldehyde three phosphate. We will be having two glyceraldehyde three phosphate. Can we not say that? Can we not say that? Yes, of course. So next steps in the next steps. That is why here we use two, 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 two. Got it? Got it? Because this dihydroxyacetone phosphate will be converted. This dihydroxyacetone phosphate will be converted into this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So, here in this step, bache, your NAD positive, your nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate which is oxidized, it will be reduced, it will form NADH plus H positive. Right, it will form NADH plus H positive. So, this is the first step you need to remember. Ha, this is the another step that you need to remember. That glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will form your 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate or glyceric acid then in the next step if you will see 3 phosphoglyceric acid will form and here your ADP will be converted to ATP right your ADP will be converted to ATP your ADP will be converted to ATP from 1 3 bisphosphoglyceric acid 3 phosphoglyceric acid will form so it is the seventh step ha it is the seventh step Right, it is the seventh step. So, this is the reaction that you need to remember, it is important. Why? Because this is the reaction where substrate level phosphorylation has been done. Where substrate level phosphorylation has been done. What is the meaning of substrate level phosphorylation? Here, to this ADP, to this adenosine diphosphate, the phosphate, right, it has taken the phosphate from this bisphosphoglyceric acid. Substrate has given the phosphate to it. Substrate has formed the ATP, that is why. So, in the glycolysis, they can ask you the question that which steps are having the substrate level phosphorylation and they can ask you the reactions. So, even if you will revise these particular topics only from this topic, now that, that will be more than sufficient for you, right. So, up to this part all clear? Sure, bache. if it is yes, please type it in the chat section. Quick guys, quick. Guys, you requested the plant physiology session. That's why I'm taking it. And this is the response that I'm getting from my students. They are not answering the questions. And mark my word, in the final paper also questions are going to come from these topics only that I have mentioned here. Right? That I have mentioned here. So, tell me quickly in the chat section. Is it clear to you? Will you revise it? The steps where your substrate level phosphorylation will occur? Now, see from 3 phosphoglyceric acid, it is 2 phosphoglycerate. Uh, in the NEET exam, usually they do not ask the enzymes, very common enzymes will be asked, right? Right, so mutase enzyme is used here. Then again, from 2 phosphoglyceric acid, phosphoenol pyruvate, PEP will be formed, right? PEP will be formed here. From 2 phosphoglycerate, it will be phosphoenol pyruvate. Enolase enzyme is used, water is released, and then finally the pyruvic acid. So, when this phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate will form again here also substrate level phosphorylation is done. So, this is what you need to remember. This is what you need to remember. Okay. So, how many steps are there where the substrate level phosphorylation will be there in glycolysis? Secondly, you have to remember that steps. Third, how many ATPs are formed? So, just look at it. Bache. Two ATPs, they are utilized. Two ATPs, they will form. Basically, not the two ATPs, four ATPs. So, Glycolysis, two ATPs, they are utilized, four ATPs, they are formed. So, again, many students, they get confused that, ma'am, how come four ATPs? One, two, one, two, but these compounds are two in number. There are two compounds. There are two compounds. There are two, one, three bisphosphoglyceric acid. There are two, three phosphoglyceric acid. There are 2, 2 phosphoglyceric acid, 2 phosphoenol pyruvate, 2 pyruvate. So, that is why I am saying 4 ATP is formed. So, what will be the net gain here? Net gain will be 4 minus 2, 2 ATPs, 
from glycolysis this is what you are getting this is what you are getting this is what you are getting now come to the nad how many nadh2 will form 2 nadh2 will form 2 nadh2 will form so overall from glycolysis can i say that 2 atps and 2 nadh2 2 nadh and ha uh, 2 nadh simply and 2 pyruvate will form and 2 pyruvate will form can we mention it of course we can so finally this nadh2 bache when it will go for the aerobic respiration when it will go for the etc it will form 3 atp so that is why in the in you know that is why we mention it okay that is why we mention it that from the glycolysis total 8 atp are formed so let me tell you how right in the paper we used to uh, solve this na that finally from glycolysis tell me the total number of atps formed just after the glycolysis so just after the glycolysis it will be 2 atps and 2 nadh2 but when that nadh2 when that nadh2 will go for etc because 1 nadh is forming 3 atp so 2 nadh will give us 6 atp okay so that is why 6 plus 2 total 8 Six plus two total eight. If there is any doubt, do let me know. Do let me know. But these are the reducing agents, na? These are the reducing agent, reducing powers here. They will further donate, you know, their electrons and protons will help in releasing the energy. So if there is any doubt from this part, do let me know because question used to come from this part. Question used to come from this part. Is that clear? This is what you need to remember. Right. So I have added one more flow chart. I'll share the PDF with you all. so here you know it is clearly mentioned so you can say one and three step where uh, they are irreversible step one more step is there which is irreversible the seventh step and the substrate level phosphorylation see two steps are there where the substrate level phosphorylation will occur in the yes so it is the step number 7 step number 10 so that is my advice remember these reaction remember these reaction so question can come from this part ki where in glycolysis substrate level phosphorylation occurs right so number of atps and if you are able to remember the substrate level of phosphorylation reaction that will be more than sufficient from the glycolysis part that will be more than sufficient from the glycolysis part next you can see here right the pyruvate if oxygen is not available lactic acid fermentation and ethanol plus carbon dioxide so it is going to produce very less energy so lactic acid form uh, formation you know that in the muscles we discussed that that lactic acid it used to form it used to cause fatigue right it used to cause fatigue so now here we have one more point bachche when pyruvic is converted to lactic acid with the help of enzyme lactic acid dehydrogenase lactic acid dehydrogenase so you can see here nadh plus h positive is used nad oxidized nad will form so it's a one step process but when pyruvic acid is converted to ethanol to alcohol it's a two step process here it is one step process here it is two step process here it is two step process two step process right the trick for step is dr you want to be the doctor na doctor for doctors we use na dr so d stands for decarboxylation and r stands for reduction r stands for reduction decarboxylation reduction decarboxylation reduction so very first step is decarboxylation where carbon dioxide will be released second step is reduction where finally your ethanol will be formed so it is a two step process lactic acid fermentation is a one step process right bachche right bachche so in the paper uh, if you will check the pyq there was a question that uh, in which fermentation carbon dioxide is released when there is the alcoholic fermentation and remember microbes in human welfare the co2 it helps in that the puffing of that uh, dough puffed up appearance of dough is because of that in swiss cheese that holes are because of this carbon dioxide production so that is how you can even relate your topic right now bachche if it is the krab cycle you know that we need to convert our pyruvate into we need to convert our pyruvate into yes acetyl coenzyme a right which is the link reaction the transition reaction it is 
it is a link reaction it is the transition reaction it is a link reaction it is a transition reaction so pyruvate will be converted to acetyl coenzyme a so we have two pyruvate will be having two acetyl coenzyme a so two times this reaction will occur two times this reaction will occur is it clear is it clear so you can say that this pyruvate which is formed by glycolysis right bachche it enters the mitochondrial matrix it will undergo oxidative decarboxylation by a complex set of reactions so this particular link reaction is also known as oxidative decarboxylation oxidative decarboxylation it is oxidative decarboxylation right oxidative decarboxylation it is done bachche so pyruvic acid coenzyme a one nad oxidized it will be reduced here so pyruvate dehydrogenase is used acetyl coenzyme a so this reaction will also occur two times the krebs cycle will be done also for the two times so do you remember the trick for the krebs cycle ha huh? do you remember the trick for the krebs cycle i have made one video na top 5 concepts of botany in that video also i mentioned that so just a minute do you remember it bachche if you remember it then please mention it in the chat section if you remember it then please mention it in the chat section all of you if you remember the trick for the krebs cycle do mention it in the chat section all of you all of you be quick just mention it in the chat section and guys i think i deserve a like for all these tricks the tricks which are going to make your plant physiology easy remember soco 2 soco 3 ba dtp is there then namo is there all that are pyqs all that are pyqs and i'll make a trick to uh, revise what we used to call it morphology examples and the trick to revise the macro and the micronutrients so guys the energy should be high some more fire emojis should be there speed up speed up even i'll tell you today even electron transport chain will be discussed here in this session until 3 we are going to finish it at any cost so we have to speed up we have to speed up literally we have to speed up so so quick 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 all of you just be quick quick sure okay so the point here is come in and kick scooty scooter fastly move on so c here is citrate i here is isocitrate aconitase enzyme is used for that right and kick and kick is telling us about the alpha keto glutarate alpha keto glutarate ya glutaric acid it's a five carbon containing compound it's a six carbon containing compound it's a six carbon containing compound then comes the scooty scooter again bachche scooty succinyl coenzyme a first then comes the succinate right so succinyl coenzyme a succinate four carbon containing compound four carbon containing compound are you getting it are you getting it then fastly move on from this f we have fumarate from this f m we have malate or malic acid and finally here oaa the oxaloacetic acid so all are four four carbon containing compound so from the crab cycle the one question the one very famous question is this part right this part this is very very important the scooty scooter part it is literally important because here what is happening do you know that here the substrate level phosphorylation will occur so in crab cycle in crab cycle there is only one step where substrate level phosphorylation is taking place right where substrate level phosphorylation is taking place so in the conversion of succinyl coenzyme a to succinate substrate level phosphorylation will occur so another type of question why do we call tca uh, why do we call this uh, uh, krebs cycle as citric acid cycle because citrate citric acid first stable product 
फर्स्ट स्टेबल प्रोडक्ट वॉट इज इट बच्चे इट्स द फर्स्ट स्टेबल प्रोडक्ट इट इज द फर्स्ट स्टेबल प्रोडक्ट सिट्रेट एंड फ्रॉम वेयर द रिएक्शन विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस ऑक्जेलो एसिटेट इट इज द एक्सेप्ट वेयर योर एसिटाइल को एंजाइमेबल बाइन नाउ डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन आकर एट दिस स्टेप इट इज फाइव कार्बन मीन्स सिक्स कार्बन इज फॉर्मिंग फाइव कार्बन सो दिस इज द प्रोसेस वेयर सी ओ टू हैज बीन रिलीज दिस इज द स्टेप वेयर सी ओ टू हैज बीन रिलीज डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन अगेन डी कार्बोक्सिलेशन सो ट्रस्ट मी विद द हेल्प ऑफ दिस ट्रिक इट इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी इजी फॉर यू टू रिवाइज द क्लैप साइकिल okay so six carbon compound the first stable product that's why we are calling it as citric acid cycle also plus why are we calling it as tri carboxylic acid because in many compounds you will see 3 3 3 here even in the citrate three cooh groups are there that is why okay that is why are you getting it so which step is there where substrate level phosphorylation will occur succinyl coenzyme a to succinate substrate level phosphorylation will occur okay bachche oa acceptor of acetyl coenzyme a which is going to form the citrate then clear clear Clear, done. So link reaction, NADH will form, NADH two will form, and then this TC. So where will this TC occur? Where will this TC occur? It will occur in the mitochondrial matrix. Where will it takes place? It will takes place in the mitochondrial matrix. Okay. So all the enzymes, again, all the enzymes leaving. succinate dehydrogenase because it is a link for etc leaving succinate dehydrogenase are present in mitochondrial matrix done so succinate so this succinate dehydrogenase it is the exception it is present in inner mitochondrial membrane and it is the one which is linking your krab cycle to the etc i'll tell you how okay it acts like the complex number 2 it acts like the complex number 2 is that clear it acts like the complex number 2 done bachche done so the first reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme citrate synthase mcq done mcq then decarboxylation i told you so i have added this chart for you with the help of this trick you guys can revise it very quickly okay okay so see isocitrate to alpha ketoglutarate decarboxylation plus nadh will form here nadh will form here succinyl coenzyme a to succinate gtp will form here which will again convert it to the atp atp in animals gtp in plants uh yes i have to check it once uh, and here substrate level phosphorylation substrate level phosphorylation here decarboxylation and nad and then next step succinate to fumarate again it will form fad done but and here we have the step malate to oxaloacetate again nadh will form so this is what you need to remember and trust me with the help of trick you guys can remember it very quickly so are you done with it yes but are you people done with it quickly tell me in the chat section all of you is that clear yes bachche is that clear sure sure this crap cycle so reactions and the steps where you know one is getting converted to another this is what you need to re remember and another doubt which i used to receive from this paragraph during the conversion of succinyl coenzyme a to succinate a molecule of gtp is synthesized this is a substrate level phosphorylation here gtp is converted to gdp again with the simultaneous synthesis of atp from adp actually here what is happening from your gtp will form immediately it will be converted to gtp and again immediately simultaneously adp will form the atp here so it is a kind of coupled reaction this is what you need to remember gtp is converted to gdp with the simultaneously synthesis of atp so ultimately we can say that one atp or gtp we obtain from this particular step done bachche done so now your uh, most difficult topic which is your uh, electron transport chain now and oxidative decarbox uh, phosphorylation this is what we need to discuss right so i am not going to start it in you know 
I'm not going to start it just now. First of all, you have to show that energy. Ki, yes, ma'am, we are interested in knowing the ETC in a simplest way. I will just tell you the steps that you need to remember. That's all. Tell me quickly. Ha, ah, eight marks ka question. It is. So crab cycle from crab cycle question will come. From ETC question will come. From PS one PS two question will come. From Z scheme, not exactly, but ha, from C three C four cycle question will come. But my cuteness is not going to give you exam, uh, give you marks in the neat examination. So focus on the questions, focus on the topics here. More, more energy, yeah. Energy should be high. The chart rate should be high. Quick. But you're from glycolysis. You are not going to find CO two. CO two and water will be released in the Krebs cycle. And now, 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 see, from the Krebs cycle again. That energy part. Just a minute. Where is it? Ha! Huh. Again. See. From the Krebs cycle also, you can see here. There are three steps in which you will get NADH. Hey na? Three steps where you are going to get NADH, even in link reaction. Even in link reaction, you will get one, two NADH. How can we say two NADH? Because this link reaction will occur twice. Here, Krebs cycle will also occur twice. So there are three steps where NADH will form. So ultimately, two into three, it is going to be six NADH. So can I not say that six NADH will be obtained from two, uh, from one glucose from this Krebs cycle? And then when it comes to the FADH, so again, only one step is there. So this Krebs cycle will also form for the two times. So two FADH ultimately. So this is how you can calculate it. You can calculate it. This is how you guys can calculate it. Okay, okay, done. So ultimately, this NADH, this FADH, these uh, reducing agent, these assimilatory parts, they are going to give us the ATP. But they will give it in the electron transport chain. They are going to give it to us in the electron transport chain. Okay. Okay, so what is this electron transport chain? See, in the electron transport chain, even if you will check your NCERT, it is written like electron transport system or chain and oxidative phosphorylation. I am telling you the things to the point. Okay, the points where from where your question can come. There are two things: ETS and oxidative. Phosphorylation, ETF and oxidative phosphorylation. Abdur bache FADH and FADH2 is not same. NADH and NADH2 in same. The only difference is of two electron and two proton. When we say NADPH, uh, in the photosynthesis we talk about NADPH. Here in respiration we talk about NADH. When it is NADH2 means two protons and two electrons are added when it is nadh one electron and one proton is added that's all when it is nadph one electron and one proton is added when it is nadph2 two, two electrons and two protons are added okay so when you talk about the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation this process is going to take place in the inner mitochondrial membrane this process is going to take place in the inner mitochondrial membrane where will it take place it takes place it takes place in the inner mitochondrial membrane now when it is the electron transport system total four complexes are involved right total four complexes are involved and when it is the oxidative phosphorylation fifth complex is involved now now the question arises here what is the meaning of complex what is the meaning of complex here right what is the meaning of complex group of proteins present in the membrane group of proteins present in the membrane so if in paper they are asking you the question that how many electron how many complexes are there in electron transport system four complexes are there but when they will ask for the collectively for the ets and oxidative phosphorylation then then total total is five fifth complex is present here so here the trick is nadi 
Susidi. Susidi looks like suicide, right? Nedi. So you have to remember it in this way. So Susidi looks like suicide, but we have to remember it. And then comes the cytochrome. Ha. Huh. Then in the uh, first of all, let me tell you about the trick. Then it is cyto C two. This is the trick, right? I'll decode it. The trick is nadi susidi cyto C two. Nadi susidi cyto C two. Susidi is looking like suicide, but you have to remember it like this. Now it is a trick because question used to come from this complexes. Nadi N A is showing me N A D H D hydrogenase. The name for complex number one. It is the name. It is basically our complex number one. Complex number two is succinate dehydrogenase. I just told you now that in the uh, Krab cycle only succinate dehydrogenase is the one which is present in inner mitochondrial matrix, which is present in inner mitochondrial membrane. It is not there in the matrix. It is not there in the matrix. So this is the second complex. What is the third complex? What is the meaning of this cyto C two trick? Cyto C two means cytochrome twice. cytochrome twice right so then it is going to be bc1 complex it is going to be cytochrome c1 complex or c1 oxidase simple right c1 oxidase so it is the complex number 3 it is the complex number 4 so when you talk about the fifth complex present here it is atp synthase bacche it is also known as f0 f1 complex bacche it is the one which will form the atp ultimately it is also known as oxisome oxisome remember it is also known as oxisome remember in the mitochondria in the mitochondria that's how we draw that inner mitochondria membrane is forming some folding some cristae some cristae some infoldings are present there so here on this infoldings you will be having these oxisomes right right so in ets these four complexes are there now what is the root basically what is the root root of flow there are two roots first is complex 1 3 4 and ultimately terminal acceptor is your oxygen oxygen is the hero here it's your o2 it's your o2 i'll explain what is the meaning of these roots then comes the root 2 root 1 root 2 it is complex 2 to 3 to 4 to again o2 clear clear this is the flow of electrons like you have the nadh that nadh will give its electron first to the complex 1 complex 1 will give it to 3 then to 4 finally to oxygen then here in the case of root 2 it is the fadh2 so it is going to give its electrons to complex number 2 so i am telling you the gist of the topic right now from where the question used to come right right so complex 1 to 3 here you are having one electron carrier ubiquinone 3 to form it is the cytochrome c the mobile electron carrier so ultimately here in these complexes you are the having the electron acceptors they are going to move the electron from one protein to another one protein to another so when electrons will move energy will be released that energy will be used to pump out the protons and that protons will be used to form the atp this is basically ets this is basically electron transport chain right this is basically ets this is basically the electron transport chain okay okay let me explain this now let me explain this okay so first of all what you need to remember here the location and then the name of the complexes got it mitochondria the oxisomes here f0 f1 complexes here which will ultimately play role in oxidative phosphorylation that is in the atp formation this is the matrix bachche and here we have inter mitochondrial space inter mitochondrial space 
सो अल्टीमेटली फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन अल्टीमेटली फॉर इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट चेन ऑल द इंजाइम्स आर प्रेजेंट हेयर ऑल द इंजाइम्स आर प्रेजेंट हेयर ऑन द इनर राइट ऑल द डायग्राम्स आर प्रेजेंट हेयर ऑन द इनर माइटोकॉन्ड्रियल मैमरे आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट are you getting my point so ultimately when electrons will be from these assimilatory pairs from this nadh from this fadh when electrons will be passed to these protein complexes when electrons will move they will generate the energy and by that energy what we have to do by that energy the h positive right these protons will be pumped here to the intermembrane space ultimately what is happening here the proteins the protons will be pumped here to the intermembrane space so when when we will have more protons here in intermembrane space bachche with the help of these oxisomes these protons will be pumped back atp will be formed so this is going to happen in electron transport chain so first of all tell me the first step clear the first step clear this will happen in the electron transport chain the first step clear all of you please type it in the chat section and guys do subscribe our channel if you want more videos like that for neat 2024 aspirants as well right if you want us to teach for neat 2024 you have to support us already you people have supported us but still we want more support right thank you belvizi okay this is what we need to do so the first point clear the flow of first point clear the site second point clear the complexes third point in electron transport chain the electron movements which will you know provide the energy for moving the protons from matrix to intermembrane space here in oxidative phosphorylation again as per the concentration gradient by atp synthase your uh, protons will pump again and they will form the atp now come to the ncrt right ha huh. but before ncrt again these are the few diagram so you can take an idea this is how the proteins are present this is how the proteins are present so this is the electron transport chain so nadh bache again i'll come to the ncrt diagram but please focus here please focus here thank you so much so nadh it will give its electrons it will give its electron now here in the complex 1 we have some other proteins also famun fus famun fus is present in complex 1 Famun first. I'll provide the PDF. Okay. Famun first is present in complex one. NADH will give its electron to FMN, flavin mononucleotide, which will give it to FES. Famun first is present in complex one. Type it. Famun first is present in complex one. Famun first is present in complex one. So NADH will give it to FMN, then to FES, then obviously electrons. Electrons will be passed. It will give its two electrons. It will give its two electrons. Are you getting my point? So when it will give its two electrons, obviously that will release some energy. With the help of that energy, two H positive will thrown out here in the mitochondrial matrix. I know you must be thinking, ma'am, here it is not. It is not two H plus. It is the four H plus because 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 we even calculate the uh, protons which are pumped by the FADH two. मतलब even when FADH will pass the electrons, energy will be generated. Even that is going to pump out the that is going to pump out some protons, right? So here, as of now, do not focus on this four H plus. I'll tell you the reason. Let's say two H plus only. Now. now we have to send in the root 1 we have to send the electron from complex 1 to complex 3 so we are going to use uq or you can say that cq right so it is basically the q non the mob, uh, it is basically the q non the electron transporter the it will accept electron it will give it to 3 so now this root will help you out right bachche this root will help you out ultimately from 1 to 3 we need to pass the electron 1 to 3 we need to pass the electron who's going to help you be kinon let's say i'm standing here you are standing outside uh, there there is one person in between i'm telling that person give that electron to meghna give that electron to meghna same as the case here so this is a simple way which right this is a simple way by which you will be able to solve the question 1 to 3 With the help of ubiquinone, one, two, three. With the help of ubiquinone. So here you can see complex one, two, three. With the help of that ubiquinone, it will uh, it will accept the electron. It will become ubiquinol. That is not the case right now. That we need to remember. Ha! Huh, that is not we need to remember. Here it is simply the quinone. So that quinone will give it to three. So obviously here you are having B plus gay C one like this. like this these are the proteins which are present here 
right right so again it will receive electron again it will receive electron again that electron when it will be transported will generate energy again 2h plus will come out right so one extra 2h plus is from fadh which we are showing here so as of now you just you can just remember it okay then from 3 to 4 how will it pass with the help of cytochrome c which is a mobile electron carrier it is movable it is more towards the intermembrane space right then from 4 for from uh, 4 Ultimately, the terminal acceptor is your oxygen. It will, it will accept these electron. It will take up 2H positive. H2O will be formed. Water will be formed ultimately. Water will be formed ultimately. And whenever there will be an increase in H positive here in intermembrane space, with the help of ATP synthase, again it will come in. Phosphorylation will occur. 3H positive means 1 ATP. Right? right 3h positive means 1 atp again i have added few uh, this diagram is basically not this diagram this is from the photosynthesis huh this is the diagram here complex one so see the complexes so one then three then four two then three then four type it one three four this is the root two three four this is the another root right right but so complex one right then your bc1 complex Right, bache again 2 into 2 because FADH is also going to send the electron to this. So, obviously double. So, see mobile electron carrier, it will give it to complex 4. And ultimately, it is the oxygen which will accept it. Right. So, ultimately from this intermembrane space, 3H positive with the help of this ATP in th synthase, they will come in. ATP, uh, ATP will form. That is how you need to remember. And when you talk about the succinate dehydrogenase, complex 2 which is it is more towards the matrix. So, it will not throw out any 2H positive outside, right. So, it will receive electrons from FAD, right. Then obviously here also you will be having FES, then it will again give it to ubiquinone, right. Again it will give it to complex number 3, then again to complex number 4. Rest story is all same. Rest story is all same, okay. Okay, so that is why in the case of FADH, because NADH is also throwing out protons here. It is also throwing out protons here. It is also throwing out protons here. So here, here what is happening at three positions, it is throwing out these protons. So NADH used to give three ATP. But, but when it comes to the FAD, from this complex only, from this complex only with the help of these FADH, protons are coming out. So FAD which FADH will give us only two ATP. That is what you need to remember. It's a PYQ. So NADH will give 3, 3 ATP, FADH will give 2 ATP. And here extra, we know, I know you must be thinking that ma'am, why here 4H positive is there? It is because of this electron movement, that uh, the reason, the detailed reason you don't need, right? As of now, you can just remember it. Okay. So look at the NCRT diagram. This is my way to revise it or remember it. B plus gai C1. Then complex number 4, A to A3. Yes. A, cytochrome A to A3 and then to copper and finally to oxygen. That is what you need to remember. So complex 1 is having FMN, FS. Complex 2 is just having this FES, right? Then complex 3 is having B, you can see it here, huh, B, FES or cytochrome C1 and then complex 4 is having A, A3 and copper. So question can come which complex is having this copper, complex number 4. Now just look at this diagram from the NCRT. Bache. NADH is giving the electron to this, two electrons will be given to FM, FMN, flavin mononucleotide, then FES, then that electron will be accepted by ubiquinone. Where is that ubiquinone present? In between that membrane, inter, inner membrane. Now here, 4H positive are coming out. 2H positive directly from NADH plus 2H positive, more 2H positive will come here. Uh, this is a very separate reason. Uh, it is not mentioned in NCRT. I am not telling you, but you have to remember 4H positive is coming. Now, here, from this UB hydroquinone, electron will be passed to complex 3 having cytochrome B, FES C1. B, phas gai C1 mein. B, uh, B first C1, B first C1, B then FES then C1 electrons. So here 
complex 3 is also receiving the electrons from complex 1, complex 3 is also receiving the electron from complex 2. That is why here it is throwing out 4H positive. Now next cytochrome C, the mobile electron carrier which will take the electron from 3 to 4, you can see here, right. So, it will give the electron to your cytochrome A, A3 and Cu and again from this part 2H positive will come out, okay, because 2H positive will come out because 2H will be accepted by the oxygen which will form the water, which will form the water, okay. So, same as the case with this complex 2, FAD will give electron to this, ubiquinone will carry it to 3, then from cytochrome C it will come to the 4 and again the same process will be repeated. So, that is how you have to remember this, okay. Done, bache? Done? So, if there is any doubt from this part, do let me know. Just, just remember the name of the complexes and these roots, these roots, that is the key. Just remember the complexes and these roots. So, from root 1, NAD, so 3 ATP, from root 2, FADH2, 2 ATP, right, 2 ATP, clear, clear. So, at last the oxygen is going to accept the electron plus it will accept two protons and it is going to form the what? it is going to form the water. So, this is what you need to remember the roots, right, the roots you need to remember, okay. So, same points are explained here, but even in NCRT that uh, in the mitochondrial matrix during citric cycle NADH dehydrogenase and electrons, okay. So, whatever points I have explained in the form of that root wala part, in the form of that flow chart, only that points are given here right, only that points are given here. They can ask you the complex names also. So, complex 3 is cytochrome B, uh, 6, uh, BC1, cytochrome C is, ha, I told you it is present on towards the outer surface, it is the mobile carrier, I mentioned it, complex 4 is cytochrome C oxidase, right, oxidase. So, ultimately it will pass the, it will pass the electrons to the water, right. So, whenever we talk about the oxidative Phosphorylation, then you will talk about the complex V AT, uh, complex fifth ATP synthase, where F naught is present in the transmembrane space, F1 is present in the ha, F1 is present in the crest. Done bache? Done bache? So that is what you need to remember. Oh, oh, oh. Ha, F naught F1. So here in the transmembrane F naught, F1 is present in the matrix. That is what you need to remember here. Okay, so it is the oxygen which is the terminal electron acceptor and the hydrogen acceptor. Done, bache? Okay, so this proton gradient is going to help for the formation. So you can see the CF naught, there are F1, 2H positive is coming, actually it is 3H positive and this is how the inorganic phosphate will be added to ADP and ATP will form, ATP will form. Done, bache? Okay. So, now you all can calculate the number of NADH which are formed in the glycolysis and the number of NADH which are formed in the Krebs cycle. So, finally, how many ATP they will yield. Plus, you can check FADH2 and then you can see how many ATP will be formed and you have to calculate the number of ATPs also. So, you will get that final number, right. Ultimately, you can get that final number. Done, bache? That is all. So, RQ topic I have also mentioned in that... Uh, Respiratory question I have also mentioned in that top 60 topic, it is very easy. In respiratory question, you have to take volume of carbon dioxide evolved to the volume of oxygen consumed. Volume of CO2 evolved to the volume of oxygen consumed. So, for different, different foods you have to check. Like in the case of sugar, it is going to be 1. You know, na, 6 carbon dioxide will be evolved, 6 oxygen are used, so it is 1. So, RQ value is important and it this topic will take less than 1 minute. This topic will take less than one minute. Okay, but a break will not be provided because in uh, I think in next 15 minutes we will be able to finish the class. So, for 15 minutes I need your support Ambika Sharma. Okay, thank you so much for making this channel. Bache. Thank you. Done? Are, after this we will finish it. Na? It is just for one minute. So, RQ value. RQ respiratory question. Volume of carbon dioxide evolved to oxygen consume. 6 CO2 6 carbon dioxide are evolved, 6 oxygen are used for the hydrolysis of that sugar na, for, uh, huh, for the oxidation of that sugar na, so 1, RQ value is 1, so this is what you need to remember. So, for carbohydrates, RQ value is 1, right, but when you say fats, fats in the case of fats we need, 
what what do we need in the case of fats we need more oxygen isn't it we need more oxygen for their oxidation and the less co2 is produced so in the case of fats rq is 102 co2 this is just one reaction 145 o2 so it is 0.7 so for proteins and fats respiratory quotient is less than 1 for some right but for carbohydrate it is 1 so it is a pyq right it's a pyq so here we have taken the example of tripalmitinic acid and bache it's nc ha uh, uh, it's neat pyq so do revise it do revise it even for the proteins it is less than 1 it is 0.9 it is 0.9 and and again again you can check ha uh, that's all so you have to check rq value for the organic acids that is your homework you have to check the rq value for the organic acids right for the organic acids but done bachche so next is the photosynthesis and the photosynthesis the very first thing that you need to remember is this chlorophyll a will give on the uh, chromatogram it will give bright or blue green color chlorophyll b will give yellow green xanthophyll yellow carotenoids yellow to yellow orange one mcq can come from this part then this is the absorption spectrum this is the action spectrum in absorption spectrum you can see we will find the peak at blue and at the red light blue at at the red light right maximum light absorbed right by these pigment is blue and red so even we will see the maximum rate of photosynthesis for this this is what you need to remember first question second is based on bachche ps1 and ps2 i have added the differences here that is what you need to remember and this is the z scheme that i have added for you trust me the z scheme z stands for zigzag it is very easy ultimately here you just need to remember that electrons right in the z scheme you just need to remember that electrons are moving from ps1 to ps2 to ps1 one thing electron transport this is the first question that can come second question ps2 when oxidized will get electrons from oxygen the another question and ps1 when oxidized will get electron from plastocyanin this is again the gist of the this is again the gist of the z scheme fourth ha huh, done okay so this so when you talk about the chloroplast remember the thylakoid which is forming grana and here you are having fret lamella intergranulitis so here you will get both ps2 and ps1 but when you talk about this part fret lamella only ps1 is present so it is playing role in non cyclic uh, it is playing role in cyclic photophosphorylation ps2 and ps1 both are involved in cyclic and non cyclic photophosphorylation so i am just mentioning the important points ps2 to ps1 electron movement will be there in the z scheme ps2 when oxidized will get water from the oxygen will get water from the photolysis of water will get a uh, electron from the photolysis of water photolysis of water and here it will get it from the plastocyanin so again the important reaction 2h2o remember 2h2o 4h plus 4 electron plus oxygen so this is the photolysis of water that we discuss in photosynthesis and here mn2 positive calcium and chloride is used so for this photolysis of water because question can come from this particular part as well from this phot photolysis of water question can come this is the reaction that you need to remember and here the trick is man ka college right the trick here is man ka college man ka college man m n man ka calcium college cl chlorine man ka college right so this is the last reaction photolysis of water so bachche i have added everything in the notes that will make very easy uh, that, that will make your revision very easy these are the important topics that you need to cover like cyclic photophosphorylation only ps1 is involved right water is not required here in cyclic 
here in cyclic photophosphorylation only ATP will form only ATP right oxygen is not evolved NADH is not synthesized it is used to produce additional ATP here in non cyclic PS1 and PS2 both are there water photolysis will be done I have mentioned the reaction with the trick oxygen is evolved NADH ATP O2 these three products we will get from non cyclic photophosphorylation done bachi then products can be used for the light independent reaction so the second point important point that you need to revise from this ha huh, the difference in ps1 and ps2 and then comes the c3 cycle and c4 cycle the most important topics which you are not allowed to leave so here you can see the krenz anatomy which you will only see in c4 plants the special type of anatomy right and it will help these C4 plants to survive in the high temperature condition like dry tropical regions. And in C4 plants, you will see chloroplast is dimorphic. Chloroplast is what? It is dimorphic. Two types of chloroplast are there, large and small. Large and small, right? That type of Krenz anatomy is there. You can see. So, bundle sheath cells are also having the chloroplast. The large one, mesophyll cells are also having the chloroplast the small ones so that is the important key points here these are the key points here done so everything is in the notes that i will share with you you guys will be able to revise with the help of these notes right and you will be able to solve the pyqs so it is just an image which is showing in c3 plants directly co2 is coming your rubisco is used in c3 plants the most abundant protein of biosphere then the cycle will take place but in c4 plants we are having the phosphoenol pyruvate carboxylase pep case and then the rubisco is there right right so i will not go in the depth of these topics i have just added the points for you the differences in c3 c4 and that i have considered as the homework for you all so after revising it from these screenshots from these images you have to fill this you have to fill this okay clear clear so any other topic that you want me to explain here in this plant physiology part any other topic Chemiosmotic hypothesis is very easy. In the case of photosynthesis, we study that. Here we are having CF0 and CF1. There also, there also you will see the movement. Like there you will consider the thylakoid lumen and here the stroma. Again, the movement is there, right? And that movement of proton will result in the formation of our ATP. That's all. That's all. But if photorespiration, Sanjay, it's a wasteful process for plants. It is also known as C2 cycle, right? It will be done in the case of C3 plants. It will not be there in the C4 plants. Ultimately, because of photorespiration, what happens? Sometimes plant, plants, whatever CO2 they have assimilated, they started using that, right? So it's a wasteful process. Your peroxisome, mitochondria, chloroplast is involved there. So it is the disadvantage of rubisco. Rubisco is no doubt, Rubisco is having more, Rubisco will prefer carbon dioxide, but if in the atmosphere the concentration of carbon dioxide is less, then it can bind with the oxygenase also. So, when Rubisco binds with oxygen, then it leads in the photorespiration. Any other question? Any other question that you people want to discuss? Yes or no? Yes or no? Now, answer few PYQs. Answer few PYQs. I didn't mention the answers there. I'll share the PDF in the telegram group. You people need to solve these questions and then I will share the, uh, uh, the answer key, right? Let's say I have added 10 questions. So, I am not going to, I am not going to tell you the answer right now. You have to answer the questions and now and after that in my telegram, I will share the answer key around 6. Okay, around 6 I will share the answer key. Yes, C3, C4 cycle differences came I have already mentioned. Done? Anything else? Okay. Anything else? So, I hope now your plant, you have revised the plant physiology. So, whatever points I have mentioned, just do that. Trust me, 
you will be able to attempt maximum questions from the plant physiology. Trust me, if you attend this session, maximum questions of plant physiology, you people will be able to attempt. And after this class, what you need to do, you just need to solve the previous year questions. Whatever reactions I have highlighted in the Krab cycle, in the uh, glycolysis, just do that. From ETC, the name of the complex is the flow of the electron and the roots you need to focus. Right, one extra point that you should do is the elect ETC inhibitor, that's all. So, I am not going to answer the questions. Literally, I am not going to answer the questions. See, I didn't add the solution here. So, these are the PYQs and you need to answer it. I will share the PDF in the telegram group. For that, you have to join our telegram. Right, for that, you have to join our telegram. So, you have to answer the question by your own. So, around 6, I will share the answer key for that. Okay, I will share the answer key for that. PDF will be provided to you just after the session. Thank you so much, Kemaya. Thank you. Done? So, guys, do like, do share the channel and do subscribe our channel and do let me know in the comment section you liked it or not. How, like, see, we feel very good when we read your comments. Right? After reading the comments from the human physiology, I was overwhelmed. Right? I have posted one thank you shot as well for that. Thank you so much for, you know, such love, such support, bache. Thank you so much. So, I really want to see some comments in the comment section. It will just take, right, 10 seconds for you guys to type whatever you have felt after the session. Whatever you have felt after the session. Not here, in the comment section just after the session. And thank you so much for such love. Thank you so much for such support. And definitely, we will guide the NEED 2024 aspirants in such a way here for NEED 2023 aspirant, we started late because of few reasons, but need for NEED 2024, we will guide you from the day one, right? And I'm repeating this point again. This channel is going to be the number one channel for the NEED preparation. Soon it will be. But do, do support us. Do support us. Quality content, guidance important information, what to do, what not to do, the strategies to attempt the need paper, everything you people will get from our channel. Right? Right? So, so would like to see more and more comments. Thank you so much. PDF will be shared in the Telegram group and you have to solve the questions.